qua people who who artists it's some someone who who is the the kind of naked nerve every small thing could just damage your soul and yes you can create but you can't be creative through the years this is just only a spark and nothing more and to keep this crazy pace you need to be like this uh, crazy ath athlete you need to build these crazy muscles and to go and uh, use this idea that just do it and uh, and run no matter it's raining Doesn't it's matter. sunny it's your birthday it's just someone is just died and yes things happens every day and you need to just keep this crazy pace All right. Good to see you again. It's been a long time. Hello. Hello. <laughs> yes, it's it's lovely to speak again. Yeah, it's lovely that this time we're not just speaking, <laughs> but seeing each other. It's a it's a nice kind of upgrade in this digital evolution of of connectivity and broadcasting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, f I figured when we brought the podcast back, uh, I thought it would be nice to sometimes see people, although I like to hear the voices too. I was just listening to a podcast the other day. It was just voices only. And I kind of love the idea of using my brain to imagine how they were expressing themselves when they're talking. So it's a good and a bad thing. But we also offer it in both audio and um, video. So it can kind of be both things, which works out nicely. So, but Lovely. Yeah. yeah. We haven't talked on the podcast forum. I mean, we talk via email briefly here and there. We're both quite busy. We haven't talked, we haven't done an episode since December. I just checked December, 2019. So that's a little ways ago. This is before COVID happened and all that stuff. So, and this is before I stopped the podcast too. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lots has happened in your life though. A lot of things. Yeah. A lot. Yes, <laughs> definitely. And, um, kind of it's our third time and, it's it's kind of really interesting storytelling in our podcasts that the first one was somewhere in 2016 mm. probably the next one or maybe 17 the next one uh was 2019 and now here so it's uh, something about three years uh step and it's it's really interesting to get this point in time when you can concentrate and uh, find what actually happened there <laughs> and it's really really crazy uh, journey which we're going through and how how wonderful to to kind of explore and see how the whole industry is moving <laughs> and changing so the third one is is probably the most dramatic uh, step in this um, journey because yeah, COVID and other stuff and I totally moved um, to London at the moment I'm in, um, in London and uh, yeah it's, it's, it's pretty nice I suppose <laughs> we will make the, uh, the next one in a couple of years and we'll continue this journey with this kind of every couple of years do you know this uh, thing 7up uh, concept? Seven Up concept? Mm. What is it? Yep. No, it's a it's a British kind of TV <laughs> thing where they envisioned the idea of slicing life mm. of some people with these steps, mm. and it started maybe sixty years ago or something mm. when a group of people were young, and they filmed, they asked them some questions. And then they come back in seven years. And seven years is a, is a pretty dr dramatic step yeah. when you was seven and then you are 14 and wow, it's a kind of completely different to you. Mm -hmm. So when they 
kind of made the whole this cross section of life through these episodes. And uh, actually, Tarkovsky um, had this vision for making films, films not about kind of one event, but about the a long journey, about the life. Mm-hmm. So yes, yeah. it's 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 great to be here. Thank you, and uh, happy that um, your podcast is again here, <laughs> and it's it's a pleasure pleasure to speak. Yeah, I I think it's uh, like you said, and this is something like we were trying to do. We were trying to catch up, and then I got really sick, and then we couldn't do that. And then like the day of the podcast, I was really sick, and I was like, I have to reschedule. I'm sorry. And then we were talking about how important this is. I don't realize the significance of these things, but how this has become some kind of kind of a little time capsule for you. These conversations kind of document who you were and where you were in this part of your life, and it's so cool to have this as a, as a thing to kind of, I don't know, I, I guess help you along the way of going like, wow, I, I've come from here and now I'm here and where are we going the next one and so on and so forth. I just looked the first, our first talk was in 2017, February 21st, 2017, around that time, I think is when we first talked, which is, wow. yeah, it's quite some time ago. There is a movie that's a really wonderful movie that you mentioned. Uh, you didn't mention, but it's, there's a movie that has. It's called Boyhood. Have you seen Boyhood before? I love it. Yeah, Boyhood. I think yes. I think they filmed it in sections like that, which I think is a really brilliant kind of approach. You know, which I think is really cool. And because so much in life changes, our dynamics, our perspective, our view of things, uh, how we evolve, how we see the world, especially being artists. You know. Yeah. Definitely. And uh, probably my kind of problem is that I'm always looking for some new steps. Mm. This is maybe a problem because I, I, I can't get com- comfortable state anywhere. I need to grow. I need to move forward. Even if it's not forward, I just need to move and I, I need to make something. Mm-hmm. And first time when we spoke, I was in Ulyanovsk. Mm-hmm. And next time when we met uh, in reality, it was Moscow. Yeah. And now I'm in London. So it's um, kind of, <laughs> mm-hmm. yes, everything. Um, You're going to be so in Cambodia kind of... next or something, Thailand or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty interesting yeah. and crazy. <laughs> yeah, but I feel really, really good about London. I feel that it's so it's so wonderful that on one hand you have really calm experience of like a village space and in 15 minutes you are in the very center and you have galleries and you have uh, meetings with uh, museums and it's so wonderful that it has completely different points but they are really, really close to each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you feel about London and have you been to London? Yeah, yeah, I've been a couple of times. The first few times I was at London, I didn't see the charm. I didn't understand why people really loved it, revered it. And the last time I went, I took more photographs and I wandered a little bit more and I, and I started to really see the charm of that city. And I also love how um, metropolitan it is, how many different races and cultures and just a, a, a nice blend. I feel like it's kind of like the New York of Europe. It's got a really, it's not as tall and crazy, but it, and it's also, but it had like a really cool energy to it. I, I enjoyed the energy of it this time, this last pass I did, but it, it's all in how you perceive it though. Every place has its great spots and then it's worst spots, you know? So yeah, as you know, so yeah. Yeah. I tried to find a, a quite silent place today in a recording studio, but uh, just sorry, I, I will close the door. It's, 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 it's really loud. Yes, it's kind of silent. And uh, yes, definitely, this is kind of the thing which I love uh, a lot. That's it's kind of really multidimensional, and you can feel comfort. You can meet completely different people and be in the very epicenter mm-hmm. of kind of art, design, technology, everything really close, close together. Yeah. And yes, so probably we all met this 
um, kind of life-changing thing with NFTs. Mm -hmm. Probably the, the biggest thing which happened through this period mm -hmm. is probably NFTs. Yeah. Because we, we, we kind of together work and um, know each other for more than a decade. So probably we started to talk to you um, maybe 12 years ago or something. Yeah. And it was so lovely. Maybe we can share this um, small uh, kind of information for, for viewers and listeners, how everything started. Yeah, we should. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's, it's a, it was really nice. It was kind of the, the very beginning of this digital story where these millions of people kind of uh, concentrated and looking into this precise uh, organism. But 12 years ago, it was completely different community, yeah. completely different storytelling. Every, everybody um, kind of, everyone knows everyone probably. It, it was like a small, small village, Super small. right? <clears throat> Super small, yeah. And um, at the moment, NFTs probably pushed it to the very center, the, the kind of the spotlight, right, of this digital revolution. Yeah. What, what, what do you feel, how, how your life changed after this kind of huge explosion of um, this technology, of this information and of kind of uh, approving from society that digital art is definitely art? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's still, it's still a battle, as you know. Um, yeah, it's it's you still have to sit people down and explain to them that what you're doing isn't just less important. You know, it's always been a struggle. I think I come from being a traditional artist, so doing traditional painting and oil painting and all these things. So I already understand the fundamentals of making art traditionally as it's taught in school. But you know, do, doing digital art when we were doing it back when we were doing it ten plus years ago we were doing it just because it was fun and because we didn't get paid really. Um, we did it because we wanted to explore things. When I think back to the, all of your original work that you would publish, how seminal that was to the community for us to be, you know, seeing the potentials and going like, Oh wow. Like it's not about photorealism on this thing. It's more like expressing form and thinking about colors and how that light works and all these things. And, and I think it was kind of a seminal thing. I think the NFT thing is, is two things at once for me. It's, it, it's the same as like AI. It's like it's or AI in quotes. It's, I think it's doing, it's giving birth to something and it's killing something at the same time. And I think it's killing our innocence. NFTs is killing our innocence in the community of people doing things purely. But I also think it's giving people a place to exist in the fine art space like yourself. And I think that's, I think that's worth the cost, you know, of the, you know, I think it was almost like this little microcosm experiment, social experiment of these otaku people like us who like to just be nerds and uh, <laughs> spend our time with our computer more than any human because we're antisocial, <laughs> you know, and then yeah. now we have to be super, super social and be in this social light. And I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I'm curious, actually, you know, you're asking me a question. I'm curious what you think of it all because it's a seminal change. It's a huge change. It's a paradigm shift, you know, this whole thing, having people verify that we do have value and using this new technology called blockchain and, and all this kind of stuff to validate it. But I've also seen it be so manipulated too. And there's been so many weird things that have happened from it. That is really interesting as well. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I love how you kind of made this envelope with this idea of innocence. And probably you just uh, brought the the best poetic explanation of my experience, mm -hmm. and um, it's it's really wonderful. Thank you. I will I will use uh, it in my kind of uh, thinking processes later uh, because it's 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 really nice. That's what I definitely feel. So for, probably for me, yeah, kind of the same story. I more than two decades ago, I just realized that I don't like reality. And I want, I want to make my own 
kind of escapism and my own reality through the exploration of possibilities with computers and uh, making not the real architecture in the real world, but making my own architecture in my world. And um, kind of, I, I studied fine art, uh, oil painting and all this huge history of art. But I always felt that, nah, it's so good, but it's a little bit dead. It's kind of, they already made it. It's like you, you're reading a book and you, you're just feeling that, nah, he wrote it. What, what should I do? Yeah. I, I'm just so envious. I'm so curious. What is my path? Because they already made their own kind of stories with sculptures five, 500 years ago. Yeah. And this guy started these wonderful paintings 150 years ago. <laughs> And all these futurists made their impact about talking about motion in uh, art and everything about 100 years ago. W what I'm doing here, yeah. this is so pity. I can't use the same medium. I can't just speak the same words because I need to kind of find my own way. It's probably something like how, bad, uh, how best your father was you need to go further. You need to kind of make your own way. You need to kind of make this painful, but your own journey. Th that's what we all need to do to self-develop this inner kind of um, calmness, right? Through the pain that, okay, so I won my own war. I, 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 I went through this crazy journey. And that's what probably you, me, and all this small community uh, kind of met that the tool is here, the amazing opportunities are there. This is here they are. Yeah. We just need to start somehow just kind of decipher this code, kind of uh, scratching the surface of possibilities. Yeah. yeah. With these particular wonderful tools. <laughs> I love your energy. And this is the most energy I've seen from you on one of our talks. I love it too. Uh, I, yeah. So many things you just said are, are so accurate. You know, the fact that these masters before us, these people that dedicated their every essence, their life to mastering the craft of, of art creation on a two dimensional plane using pigments and um, light to basically infer an image that then provokes an, a, an emotion the idea and i think this is something that myself and the whole community have always admired and loved about your work since the beginning of embracing your work is that you always found a place to come from within does that make sense like you would make your work i could tell with your work you would make it from within and the moments you didn't make the work from within is when it all fell apart for you you know like and we all do yeah. that right we all try to go okay i was making my work by myself because i, I wanted to make my own reality and then all of a sudden that reality shifts and then you're like, oh, maybe I should make my work for other people. You know, all of these things. Yeah. And, and all and I've seen you grow in the shift that you've had in the cycles that you've gone through, which is it's just good. You know, um, can you talk a bit about that? Like how how when you first started, it was coming from this really curious, pure spot and how to maintain that curious, pure spot inside yourself. Wow, it's it's, it's a it's a good one. Um, the thing which you mentioned probably it's one of the main questions which i ask myself in this meditative states of reflections uh self-reflections that why why am i started this journey and am i doing the same thing with the same approach now or my concentration and focus is a little bit shifted. So probably yes, because at the moment I'm trying to kind of do my best in a little bit different roles, in the role of father of two boys, in the role of uh, husband, in the role of uh, business partner, in the role of kind of uh, co-owner of design studio. It's too many roles. And probably this is something like a grow growing process that you realize and you admit and you kind of 
tell that okay so the uh, I, I will definitely grow when i will be able to get all these roles together and to keep this wonderful state of teenager in his own room just sitting and making some crazy <laughs> weird escapistic stuff yeah. and this is sometimes so terrible and so <laughs> impossible and to be honest i'm trying to ha hack reality almost every day uh, i love to read stories how people build their own days what what the schedule is for maintaining mastery mm -hmm. and a couple of days ago i heard a wonderful podcast uh, by lex friedman mm -hmm. uh, with demis hasabis uh, about um, how um, actually it was about kind of artificial uh, networks about AlphaGo and all this chess um, the stuff mm -hmm. and uh, in the very end of podcast lex uh, asked okay so what is your schedule and this is my kind of the sweet spot. I'm trying to find how these wonderful <laughs> biggest people in the planet, yeah. masters, craft not results of their lives, kind of as art pieces, but design their own design process. Mm -hmm. Because this is kind of meta design where you can just build so great ecosystem that your products, your inputs, your output will be so well, well delivered uh, and well kind of created that it's kind of the, the story that you to to catch wonderful birds, you don't need to go to forest and try to catch them. You need to uh, create wonderful forest and they will come. This is it. So the same story is here. We need to kind of create our own schedules in so wonderful um, kind of crafted design manners that the true mastery is in this kind of nice structure. So, and he, he brought the, the wonderful story that he has two parts of his life. The one part is when he get up and going to work to St. Pancras where um, Google and other IT um, huge offices are in London. He spent probably the whole day there meeting people, talking about uh, AI and uh, other wonderful technologies and kind of pushing uh, the whole uh, close people forward. And then uh, he come home, spend time with uh, kids and wife, and then section two, his own research yeah. from 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. or something, yeah. where he can just go in the deepest mode ever, when he can concentrate, turn off his phones, just no. Yeah. And now I will go and make my own research. Because nowadays we are extremely bombarded with everything around. Everyone is just chatting. Everyone is just throwing emails <laughs> in Telegram, in uh, WhatsApp, in, in kind of everywhere. Thousands of different ways to, to steal our attention. Yeah. And kind of the idea of paying attention, it's about paying, right? It's about kind of, um, it, it's a, it, it's not kind of infinite amount of your attention. You pay, you, you have a bank of your attention. So, and uh, sometimes it's, it's a little bit crazy to kind of create this wonderful crystallized structure of behaving. But probably for me, the, the biggest mastery is this thing. It's, it's almost impossible to, to make some workouts, to spend time uh, not just time, as my wife sometimes has this uh, joke that it's a body of our father. That you know, when I'm just body is here, but I'm just not here at all. Yeah. Okay, so and um, uh, she shows that. Okay, Simon. So uh, the body of father is here. So yes, <laughs> and I'm trying to kind of uh, to fight with this thing and to to be present, to be not just a body, but to kind of a uh, human being and kind of. Um, sentient uh, species, um, uh, close to kids and wife, and uh, it's it's definitely hard. But uh, probably 
this is the the great story that we all meet every day it's like a chess chess play we just wake up and wow the day just here and we need to make so wonderful every step every action so wonderfully um, choreographed it's like a wonderful dance yeah right when you make it in the wonderful mastery uh, kind of the big battle and we all probably struggling with this thing mm. and uh, what what is your m magic sauce mm. what is your magic uh, answer how <laughs> you turn this switcher in the highest productive mode mm. and maybe some kind kind of timing scheduling tricks and hacks which you found can you share something i'm, I'm really <laughs> love to kind of steal some tricks yeah. from this schedule mastery you know the tricky thing is everybody has a different rhythm how you interact with the world the fuel that gives you the desire in order to make the best work is all different some people get blessings from their children some people don't like to be around children you know all of these things are all different so everybody's mechanism for the muse summoning the muse within themselves that inner teenager as you said a thing that i always think about and realize is that people like elon musk and this guy that's on lex friedman's podcast and lex friedman himself they're all on our same timeline right we're all sharing the same currency the payment it's just time that is the money that we all spend so the richest person and the poorest person we're all sharing the same currency of time and this doesn't mean money, right? It means spiritually, how you feel. Like if you're just a body or if you're an essence of a person and where you're present. And I think that's really the tricky thing. What I've realized years ago was I need to compartmentalize my time or I get very frustrated. So I'm like you. I'm a dad. I'm also a husband. I'm also a business partner. I'm also a business owner. I'm also an artist. The, the thing I'm most that outside of my family, the most important thing to me is being an artist. The rest of it doesn't matter to me because if I'm able to please the inner child, then everything else is blossoming from that. So what I realized quickly was that I am best if I can get three to four hour windows of pure meditative creation energy at cycles. So if I can do a three to four hour cycle of pure meditative energy, then I'm able to really get in there. This is just my mo my own personal thing. If I can get two to three of those a day, then I find really good time. But it's also difficult. Like you said, people send emails, <clears throat> friends and everybody want your time. So they're all on you know these different apps and we're more connected than ever, but we're also not connected because of the fact that all of these things are inundated our brain. We're not really connected in a sense where we're not listening oftentimes or we're not giving ourselves purely to one another. Um, everything seems to be more transactional, less, less, um, less intimate because of technology. So there's a lot of cost to these things. You know, one thing I always think about is every convenience has a cost, you know, and there's all these things that have costs, but I don't have the magic formula, but I, as I'm almost 40, I'm turning 40 uh, in about a month from now. And I'm finally coming to this place where I'm starting to see the horizon <clears throat> of my life. I'm starting to see, oh, wow, like um, I can start to see things clearer. You know, um, there's less friction. And if there is friction, I can I can take the friction and, and put it in a ball and put it over here. OK, it's over here. And now I'm here. <laughs> so being present in the moment and meditating on these things, because it's a cho it's as you know, as an artist, it's a choice. The life that we make is a full <laughs> manifestation you took yourself from a small town in Russia and put yourself to here. How did you do that? You know, you did it because of manifestation, you know, and all of these choices that you've decided to have a family, to be a husband, to be a business partner and all these things are all choices. You know, are you inside your soul? Are you happy? Is there a friction inside? Are you, is there things that you want are, that you're working on now? And what are those things? Yeah, it's, um, I feel that when I designed a logo for media work for my design studio, we had a couple of different ideas with Igor, with my business partner, yeah. and um, everything was completely wrong. 
<laughs> everything. Uh, we tried so many different ideas and then something just BAM! And we found it. And it's uh, kind of two letters, it's uh, M and W. And they are kind of standing like, like a letter. You, you see steps. Mm. And I found that, oh my God, it's, it's, so, it's so deep that this, this logo and this sign is, is kind of like my, my inner mo motto. I, I can't just stay on, on one plate. Something inside me always pushing me from, from inside. Just go, go bigger, better, faster. Is that the voice inside? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's quiet, just, but it's, yeah. it's, it's masculine. It's, it, yeah. <laughs> Quiet, faster, yeah, yeah go. <laughs> yeah. And we all have it know, inside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, I suppose this is the thing which I just, I can't fight with this thing. Mm. I need to get this thing and tell that, oh my God, okay, this is who I am. I just, I'm just walking and my journey is probably more painful than journey of other people because I need more than not anyone but kind of more than uh, most of my um, kind of friends and people who I meet in this journey because kind of I don't know this is my bug or my feature this something has some c connections to my father or granddad or something I do not know and probably I don't care at the moment because I decided that okay so this is me when when I going with this direction I feel this crazy rush I feel the adrenaline inside I feel that I'm 17 <laughs> and I'm sitting in my room and I just cracking the universe, making something or just touring the whole internet and bringing uh, and making viral before social networks. What the hell is going on? This is the bold with the bold letters, with the capital uh, things. And this is what probably I love to do to kind of, you know, reinvent yourself and to kind of and to find that, OK, so Probably I've been here, so I will go in the craziest direction ever and try out what is going there. Because probably because I see the horizon, probably because I every day think about death and all this stuff. Do you think about it daily I, too? I think a lot of, about it more now as I get older. <clears throat> Not, yeah, sometimes it's a beautiful yeah. thing and sometimes it's really uh, alarming. I'm like, fuck, you know, I'm going to die someday. Yes, <laughs> but you know, I'm uh, in the process of reading a couple of wonderful books. Yeah, you uh, love reading. One, You're good at reading oh too. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and one I will definitely recommend. This one. It's um. Let's see, being young. Have you have you heard about this one? Uh, you might have told me about this one. Yeah, it's a being you. Oh, it's being Anil Seth, Seth, and uh, Anil Seth being you. Wow, this one is so great. I, I wanted to kind of stick to something. I love to be really uh, like a maniac to, to go through something for times and times and times. It's like a kind of exercising with something what you know. It's like kind of lo uh, deep love for a kind of film director. And then uh, like your kind of passion for anime, for Akira. For example, right? You kind of deep so inside this thing that you know it in the very small detail, and this is your kind of magic place where you can take inspiration, where you can uh, teleport yourself yeah. and kind of explore. I found this book uh, like this thing. It's a, it's a so wonderful that in first pages you meet concept about nothingness in so poetic way mm. in so wonderful and after this line i i changed my my kind of perception of dying and um about the whole 
kind of experience, he, he wrote it quite sim simplistically that he had um, Anastasia uh, when he went into this deep sleep mode and he had a kind of surgery. And then he woke up after a day or something and it was nothingness, nothing. And it, it was so poetic that we are too kind of overthinking the, the death idea. We kind of connecting this concept for just fear and um, kind of how other will be without us and all this stuff. Sure. But when you change your, your perception into this a little bit different way of seeing this inevitable process, I, I got some pleasure with this pure, pure calmness in this nothingness, mm -hmm. eternity. And it's so big and it's so out of time. It's kind of so multidimensional. I, I just probably felt in love with this kind of a little bit different concept. And also I, um, I read a, a, a good line from Leonardo da Vinci about uh, death that he was already kind of old and he 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 said a wonderful phrase that it's like really hard day when you made everything and you kind of spent the day in the very best thing ever and took everything what you could then you just need for having a good sleep the same story with the life and death when you if you lived a full life like he did yes yeah oh yeah you just not scared about this thing yeah well yeah you just feel that okay finally with a smile and this is so kind of opening doors of this calmness mm. so what do you think mm. what, what what is your experience at the moment that's beautiful I, I have not read that book being you it sounds really good and i think you've referenced a couple of his books to me which i've really enjoyed as well i go through moments where <clears throat> i have existential inner crisis that i happen and i go who am i what am i doing why am i doing it they're they're not like um they're not deep crises in my soul but there's sometimes they uh they take over and I go, ah, oh, you know, I'm trying to figure it out. And I use books to kind of s resolve my emotions so that I'm not so emotional. I try to find a solve for, because n mental health and all these things, it's hard to really find a solution for yourself. Even if you speak to a therapist, they're just simply guiding you through yourself. So you really have to be the one to take that journey. The, as you mentioned, the, the death concept where you, it's it, the idea that you've worked so hard and then at the end of the day, you just have a long sleep. I think that's a beautiful approach. The numbness, I'm curious if that's more of a defense mechanism of the concept that death is so permeating and so over, it's what gives life its value. You know, death is what gives life value. If our lives never ended, yes. we would have no value of, of rigor. We would no have, have no value of time to a, the essence of time, you know, because in my mind, death is always looming. And it's a beautiful gift because it's reminding me that I'm on borrowed time. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. I could be out riding my bike tomorrow and get hit. Uh, just recently, a, a close friend of mine died, and it's just like it happens to anybody at any time, and <clears throat> it, it's never ending. You know, if you're a passionate person, you would always want to. You know how it is when you're sitting there in that 17 year old kid teenage body as you are now, and you're creating. There's nothing that you want to do but to keep mo making the work. You know. And if you keep connecting to that old, that, ch that inner child, all you want to do is keep making the art. So I, I wish, I wish that I could live a very long, longer life, but unfortunately I just have to make the most out of the time. My f system of dealing with time is I just make a lot of lists and I set alarms and I'm very, uh, kind of articulate about where I put my time and very, um, controlling of my time. Yeah. But I also don't mean, it doesn't mean I just work all the time. I also have time where I just do weird shit like build bikes <laughs> and work on cars and and go out to the desert and and things where i'm filling my soul in a different way because just you know if you sit there in the computer 
too much the 17 year old or the teenager inside of you just dies because it's like the teenager needs to be fueled by nature and life and the vibrancy of curiosity you know so and you can only get so much out of this from reading books books only can get you halfway the rest of it is you taking that word and and translating it through uh, through actions of life you know so we're getting very meta which i love but yeah i don't know i mean So you're reading these books. They're helping you with death. You mentioned that you you think about death often. Has this always been something that's looming with you, or is this something that's new? Um, so probably I, I found this concept uh, while I was just so fascinated by Buddhism, and then I found that Steve Jobs had this approach that what if this is your last day? How will you just live you you will be lazy or you will try to do your best and never kind of overstep what you um, kind of thought that you can do. So probably uh, this uh, a little bit paranoid concept about overstepping the previous uh, life is what really close to me and probably I'm I'm dying all the time, but that's what I found, that it's kind of the new renovation with after this step, when I just make something new, when I just decide and change something, I just feel that, oh my God, I just like, again, 17, because I, I, I get a little bit old because I got in the very, very kind of predictable structure. And now I need to kind of change everything again, change language, change your place where you live, Mm -hmm. change your mindset, change your books, kind of go and reinvent yourself, be 17 all the time (laughs) and kind of try to always find these answers and be curious and be crazy about the crazy stuff on this sphere where we're just flying through the space uh, and time. Oh my God, it's so wonderful. And... um, Probably because of this thing, I, uh, I started to really um, passionately think about, okay, what next? I love tools. I love ideas that human is the definitely um, tool-oriented creature. We, we need different tools. We need languages. We need something to, to master or, or, and to kind of expand our brain um, possibilities to, to kind of create and envision something. And I started to think, okay, so when I was really 17, what was the biggest thing? And I was, okay, so probably it was, wow, it was the very start of the internet. That's what I met. The internet was like the hell, the, the trash place that it was so horrible. Everything was just uh, terrible. And everyone spoke about, yeah, so never internet will be only for geeks and never galleries and book publishers and magazines. Never will go to this um, trashy place. This is now. Nah, this is not for true. Uh, stories and I started to think okay so um, it happens kind of the revolution and all this stuff it's here so what next what what I can do what I can bring now to to take it in the very start and to make the biggest impact on the whole digital because definitely I love digital I, I'm not sure why but I love that I can make something out of this Uh, material universe that's what I really love and it's something like a portals and it's something what other people can see and be connected to me and not me as my physical me but as my mental uh, me as ideas inside me and I really love the idea like Richard Serra and other big sculptors uh, brought that they are not interested in capturing the figurative stuff, the interesting uh, about uh, capturing and telling about something what brings a a wonderful mirror, that the viewer is the main character. This is the new level of 
communication. You're not just making a portrait. No way. Who need the portrait? <laughs> no, you bring something. Uh, you don't need to look at the portrait of something. You need to just look at your own portrait, but even deeper, not onto your portrait because this is just your body and your skill and your skin and the skull. No, about the guy who lives inside, who thinks that he's a teenager and he needs this time to just escape in the digital universe. And I started to think, okay, what will be the technology now? What is the answer? And I found definitely is games somehow. I, I love this idea about blockchain, I love these uh, web-free concepts, definitely, but I'm a visual person and I'm, I'm, I feel kind of completely lack of what the hell, it looks like kind of graphics from my very childhood, no hell, I just want to, to make it wonderful, and, uh, but it's a little bit ridiculous when you bring a JPEG and tell that this is the future of humanity, this is kind of bullshit. <laughs> this is not the future of humanity. Yeah. And this fucking bull kind of uh, JPEGs, they're not helping anyone. This is just money machine at some point and kind of people believe in this thing. And I started to think, okay, so uh, I'm getting uh, kind of in this belief bubble. I need to just go away from the belief bubble yep. and uh, start to think about the real value. There's something what will be kind of really important in 50 years or in 100 years that, okay, yes, and these guys, they started to experiment with this shit and they developed something and these particular things just kind of went into the crazy, crazy scale. And I started to think that, okay, so computer graphics is what we did definitely love. Yes, we love to be immersed really, really deep into um, stuff. Yes. So uh, games at the moment are the pinnacles of technological and artistical um, interpretation of something. They are really, really connected to money. It's for sure. Yeah, it's a kind of market uh, delivery, te uh, market telling stories. But what if we can somehow imagine and envision these things through the artistic point of view that we are 17 again and the internet is just here and it's very beginning and it looks like shit and we can reimagine everything and it's world of VR and this is the world of first personal experiences and this is the world of uh, Unreal and this is the world of game engines where we can make something truly immersive, truly um, kind of what, what connects us as these teenagers into these visionary worlds where we can just be without these JPEGs, where we need to believe that this is the uh, kind of important thing for the humanity. And that's what I started to do. I said two years ago, I started to spend all my money. Uh, my wife uh, hates me about this story. <laughs> 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 I started to spend almost all my money, you know, for just uh, developing something. It was three years ago. We were, it, it was uh, kind of in the middle of coronavirus um, thing. And I, uh, and I started to think, oh, my God, what the hell? It's just we, we, we're using only uh, technology. And what, what's the next step? So probably I, I just play games. And that's what I'm doing to go uh, to the forest you know, uh, to kind of escape from the crazy experience from small kids. I just played GTA 5 and went uh, through uh, with Trevor into the forest. That's what I did. Just, okay, no, not killing anyone, not making some creepy stuff, just uh, as a gentleman, just into the forest, you know, just to go around. And I, I felt that, oh my God, this is wonderful portal where I can just make my own stuff, how I can make it. I can't. I do not know programming. I'm really bad with uh, planning, with kind of really strategic planning for a couple of years. I'm terrible with um, Unreal. And I decided, yes, I need to make it. Uh, that's what I love, to kind of jump in the very crazy, scary stuff and to reinvent yourself. <laughs> yeah, this is it. The true norm. What year is this? Scary. This is two yeah, years ago? Go there. Two years ago? Yes, yeah, three years ago. Three years, three years ago. ago. Yeah. yeah. And the journey was just 
crazy hell. <laughs> I, I went through kind of depression, pills, uh, <laughs> kind of uh, uh, semi-divorce and all this crazy wow. stuff. But I, I truly believe that, no, 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 no. I just feel, I smell it. What is Can it? Can you smell it? No. So, what is it? So um, uh, the name is uh, the name was the Great Filter. I started to to, to make my own game. Yeah. And uh, I just started to make it and started to make it completely wrong, just the wrongest way possible. Sure. I hired there? wonderful people. Wow. The only no, the, we, we, there's only one right way. It's your way, even if it's wrong. Yes, you know? yes, yes, definitely. You know, uh, I found a really, really great um, storytelling here that I started to kind of build a company and I started to uh, build this company with wonderful people who can code, who can make some concept art, who can uh, make th some pr um, uh, product um, development uh, phases, who um, gave me the ideas of uh, agile development. And I started to boil in this wonderful pot of people who were just so deep in this Python and crazy stuff around and I felt that okay so I have a design studio I have my art stuff but I just feel that this is the north phase north uh, kind of direction your own game feels yes and I spent two years and found that no it's it's not the the thing which I need to do because my my own kind of I, my own idea was that at the moment we have only commercially driven games yeah. the good looking games 100 percent commercially driven yeah where people understand totally yeah. uh, in the uh, naughty dog or other biggest companies how uh, to go through the story with completely um, popular way I, I wanted something different i wanted to, to kind of make something like Chris Cunningham uh, made years ago. So probably that's why I'm in London, I suppose. <laughs> uh, I, I was so uh, impressed by Chris Cunningham when I was a teenager that I started to think, oh my God, London, probably the place to move somewhere. <laughs> and yes. Uh, uh, so He's in LA now, I think, here. Los Angeles. Yes, yes, so probably. <laughs> See you, That's what I see you in LA do. soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In three years after when, when, when we record that. No matter who, where you uh, are, you are still yourself. Yeah. Yes, definitely. So, and then what I started to do is to kind of search uh, the, the answers. Okay, so now I understand. I got these new muscles. I understand what the software development is. I understood how I can build something. And I started to think, okay, so how I can bring my own story. And two years ago, I started my journey. The name is Modules. And this is the thing which I truly believe that will go till the rest of my life as the always growing universe. I started this journey before Mark Zuckerberg uh, told Meta. Uh, and all this uh, uh, web-free stuff. I started this thing as my own gallery, which I will be able to put into the biggest uh, places like Steam or, or Meta Store, uh, or Oculus Store, and give people ability not to look it on a screen, yeah. but being inside. And I became so impressed by this idea that, oh my God, oh my fucking God, I found the answer. So the art of the future is the software because you can improve it all the time. It's like your iPhone. You wake up and it's a kind of information that, okay, congratulations, the new software is here and now we are better, faster and kind of deeper. And, I'm, and I was, oh my God. This is it. That's what I want to do. I want to make my own stuff and not to, you know, throw it and tell, okay, done. I'm going further. No way. I will be able to tweak it, to, to kind of improve it till the rest of my life. I can just go back. Just imagine your old films, your old projects, they all kind of here and you can tweak them. 
and people can go there and it's your own space space of ash thorpe how wonderful it is i i really want to go there you, you started to um the, to tell this story about how you how uh in the very start of your journey you uh painted and you um used a kind of real um kind of canvases and all this stuff how it would be wonderful to to show all the evolution uh of your craft and i was oh my god this is the answer i'm 17 again and this is the start of internet but this time i will make the internet i will make everything yay <laughs> mama i'm in i'm 17 i'm it's my first laugh my god so and you know i i decided that oh you, you know when you kind of diving deeper and deeper and deeper and you think and everything which you find there is just you know it's like just like a burning you because I started to think about sound and I found that oh my god this is next <laughs> next level of communication through the sound because it's spatial and it's endless you do not have start and the finish of your tune you just there and this is fucking process you're just sitting there and it's just it is one of my friends he he smoked um, some weed and uh, sat in virtual reality and spent hours inside one of my experiences because it, it has no start and end. This is just like waterfall. It's, it's like being in the fucking forest. You're just there and it just happens. And you, you are witnessing this beautiful stuff. And then it's, it could be so crazy that you are sitting in the forest and then you see how something changes and you know that this is the creator of this forest making some updates right now you are seeing the the essence of creation you can listen to the track in the very precise moment of creation of the track and this is so crazy and big so and um, I named the project Modules because uh, of the project module, which I made 13 years ago as my diploma project, uh, the white one with this uh, black stuff flying around. And uh, this time, the only one tool which we had was computer graphics. We need to make it, animate it and render it. And then we have these just video files. And these video files, they just bringing our souls into different universe. Fuck yes! But just imagine that this is not a video file. This is just the whole kind of space where you can be and just, just experience it. Yeah. Meditate there. Just be there and expand it. And I was so, so, so deeply connected to this story that I spent almost two years just building and going through the painful stories and it's done done and we will launch it in one month wow. and it will be the biggest revolutionary fucking thing <laughs> in the whole digital universe that's what i really believe that i'm making it not for me you know i'm making it for the whole kind of community for these people who will experience it and tell oh my fucking god this is not the G jpeg which revolutionized the world this is the world which will revolutionize us inside because we can be creators in the completely new levels of creativity so something like this thing uh, i will send you links it's a module uh, modules.space the website and uh, vicious yes it's the, the biggest thing i have ever thought that i will do at the moment it's 11 rooms 11 installations 11 you know uh, again we all think with spaces we we dream with 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 spaces and what we do at the moment with the, the, the whole these nft stories that we just make a painting or something and uh, it's somewhere on a wall like this screen this is just a screen it's not kind of the big difference yeah. Right? So 100 years ago, it's like looking at uh, one pixel it, of an image. Yeah. 
Yes, it's, it's flat. It's just flat, nothing more. It's illusion of depth, but just an illusion. Yeah. But when you inside and you can explore and you came, can gamify, and the, and the biggest story here is what all these sculptors and all these wonderful people from the contemporary art world uh, try to deliver. That actually it's not figurative because it's not about someone. It's about your own kind of inner perception. And that's what I'm trying to bring here. And uh, I will tell you a story, fast and crazy. It was early morning in my studio in Moscow. I just sat there and one of my uh, friends and colleagues, uh, Sergei Shurupov, uh, came and uh, he um, just, and I tried um, kind of a game, game, game tested my game. Uh, it was early prototypes. And uh, he sat and uh, said, well, okay, what is it? What, what are you doing? And he's a part of media work. So we kind of just um, uh, had all these teams together. And I said, yeah, it's my game. So just try it out. And he uh, took the joystick and uh, started to go through. And it was pretty simplistic uh, kind, kind of gamification uh, thing there. And it was a little bit struggling process to go through. He spent five minutes or something and then he found a way how to go through and he started to scream yes yes i, I just went through wow and i i was oh my god i just heard not scream i just heard a really really big arrow that can you imagine that someone looking into mine your or someone's film and he's screaming because he is found something. I truly believe that it was and it is almost impossible because level of connection is kind of less personal for the viewer, you know. And the second story is that in a couple of days after this incident, uh, eyes opening incident, one of our studio members, Philat, came and his eyes were just completely red. He spent the whole night making something. And I asked, Phil, what is going on? Uh, you, you looks like shit. And he said, oh my God, no. Inside, I'm, I'm just dancing. I'm just, you know, it was one of the best nights in my life. I spent the whole night playing cyberpunk. Mm -hmm. And I was, oh my God, the second biggest arrow he spent the whole night not with the girl, not in, in, in kind of uh, uh, going through the internet and looking to our works. No, in this completely different way of communication and connection to digital worlds through the games, through these completely different worlds where you put yourself, your mind there and kind of can teleport your own in the kind of self. And I was, okay, so done. Probably I need to go explore and kind of find ways how to use these tools to bring your own stuff. And I'm 100% sure that it will be so loud, it will be so big that in, in a couple of years, it will be kind of the whole community making stuff, this spatial stuff, this kind of holistic stuff, when you can make your own gallery, your own space, your own sound, your own sculpture, your own, 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 own everything, you know, to, to be a master of your self-expression on every level possible. So this is it. Wow, too emotional. I love that. Yeah. I mean, there's so many, I've wrote, I've been writing down notes as you've you've been explaining kind of your life at this point i think this is a, a novel concept that the the future of what we're doing and interacting and and, and what you're what, i'm going to go to a full spectrum here when you're saying that when we will eventually evolve into this space and and kind of show all the maximum dimensions of our potential as artists and as people using this thing and i don't even think the word games is accurate i don't think that that's actually the term anymore i think it's almost going to be like it's second life or some sort of thing in which like but what it what is really interesting is is 
is it's almost if you think about it meta if you think about how meta this is think about like your wife the person that you spend probably most time with but you're always learning about her right it's ever evolving and it's the same thing with this potentially is it's this ever evolving understanding and experience of somebody's abstraction within themselves the spectrum of who they inside are inside the yeah. kind of inside their own space yeah. And it's so, so deep and so philosophical that it could be your own um, kind of thing where you can create completely different stuff. And every time when I think about something, I can't get outside of this bubble yeah. of um, kind of holistic approaches. What's a huge when thing. you think about, yes, and uh, especially gamification, just imagine that we are talking to you, we are meeting. But we meet each other, not just talking to you by just uh, Zoom or some other tools, but we meeting in your space or in my space and making my own weird games or your own kind of your own personal experiential stuff. And we can talk through the making this stuff together, yeah. for example. Yeah. And it could be kind of so multi-level on every level. And uh, one terrible story is that games at the moment are spoiling with this uh, approach that games. Yeah. Because when I'm talking to uh, curators, to some really, really big people in the world of art, most of them, uh, not uh, Hans Obrist, he, 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 uh, when I spoke to Hans, he said, yes, yes, I'm, I'm playing at the moment uh, these Demon Souls and all these hardcore. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. Hans Obrist playing the <laughs> He's hardest. He's very open-minded. Uh, yeah. He's very... Yes, definitely. Very but other mind. people... Definitely. But other people are not so open-minded. Well, and every time when space. I... It's because he is. Yes, definitely. They are talking, you know what? Games? Are you making games? Yeah. <laughs> it's about some orcs or some uh, kind of knights and all this. Just oh, guys, just people understand that game is that what we're doing from the very beginning of our lives. We just Existing. humor. Uh, yes, we we love to find games in completely different ways, and it's not about the games how we think about them now. It's not this kind of concept it's more about kind of involvement yeah. and about attention most games now are and kind it, of like hollywood movies in a sense they follow a formula yes to a, a initiate an emotion on a very general level so that because as you know when naughty dog goes into making a, a video game it takes thousands of people to amass that energy and that focus but the thing they build is quite beautiful i'm sure i've not really played any of those games but you can play like a game like Inside, for example, by a smaller developer who is very yes. pure. And that's probably one of the most brilliant games. That game and Journey, I'm very particular with my games. Same with movies. I know you're the same way. You know, like yeah. you can watch a, an early Spielberg film and it has so many brilliant things to it. But at the end of the day, it also has a lot of this construct. When you watch a Tarkovsky film or something like that, and it, these are, have a different experience, which is wonderful, right? It's so beautiful that in the spectrum of filmmaking, you have this range. I know that you've encountered wanting to make films and you felt that the passion of doing it. And I know it was crippling for you in many ways and was challenging for you to understand that you are actually maybe beyond film. You know, I see as I see it now, it's almost like you're discovering the fact that there's a whole different world that you're exploring of curiosities. And, you know, the only reason the only reason that's ever going to be of value and only be different from the rest of what we experience now is if you believe it and if you build it. That's the only way. Yeah. You can say it in abstract yes. words. You know, you know how we know it. It's words are cheap. It's so simple to say something, but it's another to do it. And it like think about like what Walt Disney did for animation and our childhood and imagination. Walt Disney was this brilliant mind who amassed all these people and yeah. put put these worlds that were on and in books and abstraction and words and then gave that to people. But in, in, in the other side of it, he's dead now. And his legacy is completely shifted to this machine that just makes money and uses people's honest, er, um, innocent emotions to take their money, you know. And sometimes people enjoy it, but it's also turned into some sort of weird monster program, you know. Yeah. So <laughs> you said something I think is quite brilliant, and I love yes. it. You said that software is the newest art. 
I don't, I'm paraphrasing. You didn't say that necessarily, but I've not heard that before. And I think I, I agree with you so much on that term that art is not what it is now. Art is actually an evolutional software. And what you're saying about this program and everything, it's so cool that you're saying it. I've had so many thoughts recently about this. I've actually, every night when I go to bed, I sit there and I watch my phone and I watch Unreal Engine tutorials. I'm trying to see the walls of this program. Oh my God, loudly. So I'm, yeah. for the past two months I've been watching, I'm watching people fail in it and then succeed so I can see, because you know, a software has walls, you know, oh, this software sucks at this, but it's really good at this. So I'm realizing through others, before I even touch the program, I'm building a construct of what it is and my approach. And then I'm going to write yeah. down my approach so I don't fall into it. Because when you enter a program, you, you have to understand. It's almost like going to another country. You have to understand the language in order to get around. And I'm trying to understand yeah. the language so that when I get when I get there, I can go right to what I need. So, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's cool that you're – I didn't realize your passion for this was so big. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I remember that when we met – you you spoke about your kind of project and you showed me something on your phone <laughs> uh, with the experience yeah. yes it was really lovely to kind of you know when you when you open-minded and when you listening carefully you you get this information and you understand that the world is changing and you can't go with the same roots as as your kind of father and other people went you just can't. can't it will be so lovely but just impossible but nowadays i suppose the answer is even more cruel that we can't go with the same way as we went 10 years ago or one year ago we just need <laughs> yes definitely yeah. and we need to kind of find these walls find these boundaries and i really love that you are just always touching and you always just uh open to this completely new ways and uh it's a really pleasure to to hear that you explore these new worlds and this is what i suppose is the 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 the, the most valuable thing at the moment is to be young all the young time and, curious. and it's to be yes it's to be flexible yeah. And Learning. be open to yes to all these technologies. Yeah. Yes, because the technologies uh, and chat GPTs and all this stuff will uh, kind of accelerate yes. the progress even faster. Oh yeah, exponential. And we need to exponential. And in in next three years, oh, yeah. when we will chat, <laughs> it will be so radical thing, yeah. completely different. Yeah. And I hope that this next three years will bring maybe we need to kind of make something like a journal just bringing you know these things uh what's what actually happens through this free year because it's really interesting but i truly believe that what you said that two games which definitely pushed me into this uh story is the journey and insight is the two things which were built by artists yeah, you feel the artistry artists Yes. Yeah, the, the, the ambiguity, <laughs> the openness. You know, life is ambiguous. Life is in the gray zone. Very rarely in life do you really realize that things are polar, black, and white. It's very rare. Yes. There is no truths, really. And, and, and beauty is in the eye of the beholder. That is the biggest, most truthful thing ever to be said. But it's also horrible because there's nothing to latch to. You know, as you enter into the fine art space, I, I know you're getting into it more. And as I encounter it and I speak with curators and gallerists and all these things, it really throws my mind all over the place because I think to myself, and this is a perhaps a bad look at it, but I think to myself, there's a lot of people that don't make art, never created art, don't understand the intimacy of making art, understand the essence of what that really truly is to make something. And they're dictating where the art is valued and where it is perceived and how it's perceived by the public. And this is why you have this big disconnect between this, these worlds, you know, and it's a big problem, but I don't have answers for it other than I think people should be a little bit more open-minded to it. And I see that people like Ryan Zur and, and our supporters our Patreons like Jahan and all these awesome people that are forward thinking that, that are supporting these ecosystems. But yeah, it's, it's a, it's a really 
I mean, I don't know. I've had, I'm having different encounters with the fine art space. I think it's really interesting, but I, I still feel like it's a very unevolved dinosaur in the, in the presence of the psyche of human experience, you know, but yes, I could be completely wrong too. You know, in order for people to understand why we have value, they have to believe in us and how can they believe in us if we can't communicate that, you know? And so it's, it's a, it's a, it's a big problem, you know, but yeah, you, 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 I realized, and I think that some of you know, is like you can barely control your own emotions. How could you control anybody else's, you know? <laughs> so the more you can just focus on what makes you happy and understand yourself intrinsically, then you can spend your time doing things that make you happy by being curious and pushing forwards and being prolific and thinking about curious ideas and bringing forth these, these dimensional experiences. Cause what you're saying is fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, 10th, infinite dimensional, right? What you're after, you're talking about sound and spaces and volumetric experiments. This is a second version of reality and it's, it's using this technology to do so. It's going to be very interesting. Yeah, <laughs> we will see. But you know, when when you, you you spent so many years through the history of art, through the software, through these wonderful possibilities, and then you read about user peaks that they revolutionizing something, I feel quite kind of in the w w what is going on. Yeah. That how these J JPEGs just making the revolution. I I don't see this story at the moment, but I definitely see that now you, me, the big patrons, they are listening and they are carefully looking into this uh, small, uh, previously small, now not so small yeah. um, club of... Uh, Remember when it was small race? and it was just a couple of us? You remember that? Yes. That wasn't too long oh, ago. Yeah. Yeah. It was, that was another yes. weird thing. I was like, who are all these people? I never heard of these people, but when you put money in the thing and big amounts of money, everybody is a oh, digital yeah. artist now. And it's like, ah, this is doing the same thing that you hate about games. People go, Oh, games are this people go, Oh, digital art is this. And it was misrepresented in so many ways. And you know, I would see it. And I, I f f part of my heart bro broke because I was thinking to myself, the innocence is getting lost in this noise and and i don't know maybe i got more emotional about it but i'm an emotional person i'm i'm okay with being fucking emotional so <laughs> that's one thing i realized through <laughs> I my found, time yeah. it's okay to be when i was younger i would always tr be frustrated that i was emotional you know like why am i so sensitive to everything and now i realize as i get older i say it's a blessing because i'm alive i've encountered friends definitely I've en how many people have you encountered in your life that are fucking numb to reality and i feel so bad for them i'd rather be an emotional person and feel everything than not feel anything at all you know yeah yeah definitely so we will see how how everything will will be changed it's <laughs> it's so wonderful and yeah let's <laughs> let's keep this uh, fresh perspective of teenagers right <laughs> when you just uh, open and I found that probably it's it's the wonderful timing for reinvention for finding something and setting something again and when the new era the new tools the new technologies and the new completely um, kind of horizons are here this is kind of again this teenager spirit that's our job that's our job yes. it's our job to do that definitely yeah, it's our responsibility as manifestors of the unknown it is literally our responsibility to show that our world within us to the outside world and that's our gift to ourselves and to the others to say life isn't what you think it is it's actually could be something else i mean look you you've referenced so many things all these silent mentors i call them silent mentors steve jobs as you've referenced or um yeah uh anil from the uh, from the book that you're reading like all of these mentors that we had yeah. their their quest was to inspire you and they've done so by giving you their essence so you're supposed to continue this path that's what i think ultimately is what humanity is about and what we're here for is to share these these inside dimensional experiences and our life with one another 
and even if even in these flawed forms like this interface right now even though it's amazing we're still using a flawed old interface look at this it's a dimensional screen i'm not in your physical presence we're in, we're, we're still getting closer but it's not completely there but w if you're open to it and you can see it you can really experience it you know it's just really quite beautiful but, yeah lovely so let's continue the journey let's let's push the whole world mm -hmm. into the future let's let's open the the wonderful doors it will go no matter let's... if we want it or not you know the ideas that you have if you think about it most likely there's been other people on this planet who are having this similar idea as you thinking about games is not what they what were showed as games you know games as they are now i think in the quote of games i think is because of the design of consumerism and the design of capitalism and the design of how things are perceived if you removed all of those things this is one thing i think about a lot if you removed nfts from the digital art space where would we be now you know would it be validated would we even care you and i were making art the way we were making it with computers no one was paying us nobody fucking yeah. cared except one another <laughs> and that is a really beautiful thing but at the same time it's very taxing you know and then the moment you take on like mtv job you know remember the was mtv one of your first clients yes probably it was uh microsoft and mtv yeah. yes it was <laughs> 17 in the middle of nowhere and you just make something <laughs> to the the channel which was your window in in the wonderful world so that's a really interesting thing can you do you meditate on yeah. the idea that that at that age you were attracting two of the biggest conglomerate companies in america do you know why that is i think i i, I think i know why that is but do you know why you think that is like why they came to you for those things because it's something completely that's different. right because it's you. something so fresh because it's you <laughs> yes yes yeah. probably yes yeah. and uh, companies want that identity i don't why why wouldn't they you know their whole design is to show that they have a uniqueness in the space you know and oftentimes they can't why is that because the machine's so big and everything's designed by committee and it loses the essence yeah <laughs> I'm on a rant here, but it's how I feel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I suppose it's a great to be emotional mm -hmm. and to great to, to, to think and to reflect and to kind of understand what's going on around. And it's um, kind of, I find uh, my, this idea of just hypersensitivity is definitely a, a good thing to, to, to have. It's like a superpower. Yeah definitely it's, it's, it's good like and bad different yes well it's why a lot of artists kill themselves because they're so sensitive they feel everything the good and the bad and so then every, things that aren't normally uh felt by others they feel everything it's like it's like we're on a car the real sensitive artist is in the front bumper getting all the wind and the snow and the ah you know and then and everybody else is inside the car driving you know <laughs> and somebody's feeling the most of it all but at the same time you're able to you really uh, get the essence of life you know which is which is interesting um yeah i don't know it, there's a lot of things you mentioned um you mentioned this concept of a jpeg is the future can you dig into that a little bit like that it, the jpeg is not the future i think you're talking about web web3 and nfts and all this kind of stuff can you get into that? Yes, um, I I try very hard to to believe, but sometimes it's really really hard to believe in something. And when people are so happy about something, I want to be happy too, but I can't understand the whole kind of conceptualization of this so I totally understand the concept of blockchain and how uh, wonderful the, the me mechanism and machinery is but what I feel at the moment that when when I spent almost 30 years with uh, history of art with uh, 
just making something and uh, spending so crazy time in in completely different directions and seeing something just you know this uh, people who just uh, stepping inside the space and making something and uh, just you know because this some people believe in this stuff and making this uh, hype around something and starting to 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 tell about the um, kind of importance of jpegs and all this stuff and it's it's kind of you know it's like this meme with uh, john travolta with just staying <laughs> and trying to choose something yeah. he's just completely yeah, Fiction, lost yes. and yes. <laughs> yes and i'm this guy i just I i'm can, the same guy I, I can, by the way so i'm like What's you know what's going on here <laughs> what is going yeah. on right so well that's a hype you, you that's know, a hype I, I thing. people are using people's emotions to overhype yes. them to push a market yes. and to push their own agenda and that is again a big problem i have with it and no wonder people are just dis- touching to the whole space when it all started doing that i was like oh, fuck it's just gonna get ruined by people getting jealous or people getting uh manipulative you know that's really what it is and you couldn't tell me that that stuff has value because I know what value is to me, you know, but yeah, I want to yes, believe same, though. I want to believe. Yeah. <laughs> it's a new club of these old guys who just want to believe. Yeah, like X-Files. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, let's, let's put the UFO <laughs> stuff. No, but it's a, a, it's, it's it's a, it's a JPEG. <laughs> JPEG, yes, I want to believe. <laughs> <laughs> it's really lovely. <laughs> yes, and <laughs> I want to believe. I want, I want to be. Uh, okay, it's 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 hilarious, <laughs> wonderful. Uh, and uh, uh, probably we, we need to believe, and we need to kind of find um, strength inside to sometimes tell that. Nah. So it's it's good, but I would better just step away. Yeah. And I do that uh, silently. It's, it's hard. I just don't participate. So I'm like, oh, yes. you couldn't you couldn't pay me enough money to agree that this has value. Sorry. <laughs> yes. But I won't go on Twitter and start hating on people. That does nothing good. Bringing more yes. hate into the noise of Twitter is just a waste. It's a dumpster pile. <laughs> so I figure I'd just be quiet about it, let people figure it out and and just do my thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we we had uh, with you and uh, with Igor really wonderful kind of walk. I love that about kind of five five hours or something. We just we walked through went Moscow. through yes from Moscow. <laughs> and what was really great is that I really love that you met Igor yeah, I loved him. and we spent twenty yeah we spent twenty years with Igor and we share the same um, kind of vision that the time is is the crazy river and something is just always happens but the the real true stories will be still here in 100 years and uh, igor is usually ask me and ask all our team that do you really believe that this thing will make a dent in the universe and will be here in 100 years do you really believe that this is something timeless let's get into that actually and sorry go ahead finish your thought i want to get into this this is one of my questions but i want to get into the how you've just how you figure that out but go ahead yeah yeah and uh this is a really nice wake up cold water shower because sometimes when you kind of dig too deep into the world of jpeg delivers you can be a little big believer, uh, a little bit, and this cold shower can give you the whole essence, the whole story that the true stuff is not about hype. The true stories is about lifelong passion, is about obsessiveness, is about blood, uh, like, you know, this blood sweat and pixels right it's it's want about kind of bringing i want to believe yeah and this is it it's about insanity but not about okay i can get some money and uh make something 
And I'm really happy about um, the world of art and about curators that they are trying to be quite protective, um, usually. Yeah. And not to kind of allow all this stuff. Okay, let's no, smart. make it they move very slow. No. It's just it's just smart. Yes. It, it, it makes it so that the things that really because you you saw like the the market went boom and then it fell off and then everybody most of the people left because they realized oh it's just a uh, I got what I wanted from it which they're just taking they're just taking taking taking. You, yes. The hype, as you said, the hype, the hype has value for hype's sake not for timeless sake it doesn't work yeah you can hype something you could you could go out to the trash and say look at this trash this is the best fucking trash in all the planet because i said so <laughs> well that's a bucking bullshit i'm sorry i don't i don't, I don't agree yeah. with that and that's because i know what value is but not a lot of people understand that they're willing to listen to these people saying the wrong the false truths you know um, and I don't know what the value is. I don't have the answers. I don't even know how to process my own reality. I'm still working through it. But let's talk about, this is something I've talked with Mike about. When I say Mike, I'm talking about people, other artists yeah, that yeah. Were, were digital artists from what we were doing way back and we were doing it for free and because we love it. Now all of a sudden we're in this weird space where it's like, oh, now we have some sort of value, which is very cool, but it's very weird. And this is a conversation we've had is how do you make something that lasts this five that we, we use quantifiable things in terms of time, which is an abstraction, right? 50 years or a hundred. Let's dissect that. Let's get, let's get binary with this concept. How do you value anything in this space where everything is a gatekeeper? The art that's valued now is a gatekeeper concept. This is how I look at it. It's somebody saying that this art has value. When I was younger, I learned about Van Gogh. Why did I learn about Van Gogh? There is a bunch of other artists that I think are more fascinating than Van Gogh ever was. I don't mean to be mean. I love his work. I think it's fascinating. But why did I end up studying his work? It's because a group of people agreed this is the artist to study for this history. Although it's fascinating and interesting, there's far more interesting things if you start to dig into what art is beyond the surface of it. And so when you make something, when you, when you talk about quantifying, how can you make something of value at this point? In my mind, the current formula is that you need to go and cut, kiss the hand of these curators at this current day that say art has value at, your, at this level. That's the only way. That's, that's how you go, this is timeless. And that's really scary because you're putting your work in the hands of others, which is, it's okay, <clears throat> but it's very, um, there's no quantifiable space for that in my mind because it's all a, it's a human experience, which is highly flawed, highly social, and uh, it's manipulated. It's just like money or a currency or any of these things. It's all social currency, you know? So anyways, that's my thought on it. So when I started to think, how can I make something that lasts a hundred years? I don't fucking know. How could I even know that? <laughs> I, I wish I did. And I think we all wish we could, you know? But, yeah. The superpower of knowing. Well, yeah. I think you just make it by making your most true self thing. Like when you were 17 and working with Microsoft and, and, and MTV, I, I almost, I almost, I don't know yourself at that time, but I can't imagine you were making it going, this is for MTV and Microsoft. You're just making it. You know, that's just my thought. And now to this day, we're all these years later, we're talking about it. That's has, that's, that has longevity. And why is that? Because I think, because you're being pure to yourself. So, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's lovely. It's, it's, it's a wonderful question. And, um, probably I, I'm in really, really kind of hard conditions with the history of art because it, it, it was my big companion for almost the whole of my life. And um, what I found that if you want to build something wonderful and big, it's like in science, you can just start from the very beginning. You just yeah. can't. You can, no, no, you can, but it's impossible to go somewhere and make a big, valuable thing for the society. You, you you can't go through all these years by yourself. You need to understand, you need to go through, you need to make your own research, deep research, kind of really specific research. 
And then when you stand uh, on a giant shoulder, you can see further, you can see a different horizons. And maybe because it was so crazy giants and so crazy shoulders. So probably when you step now on top of the topest giant, you can see the space as it is because it's it's a crazy amount of information already created by thinkers it's a huge amount of art and thinkers and probably the the concept of thinking more than to uh to to just create visuals i, I love this concept by dushan by marcel dushan that um, he, he was a truly revolutionary uh, guy who, who kind of reinvented the sculpture kind of 100 years ago. And um, he, he said that I, I don't kind of have anything with retinal art. And it, it was for me so weird that, oh my God, I was kind of quite young when I first time heard it, retinal art, wow. And he's telling, the artist is telling that retinal art, this is the, the simplest form of art, when you just need to please your eyes. And I started to think, okay, what actually is the essence? What actually is the true kind of nature of art? So it's probably with this 100, years of thinkers is, is thinking, is bringing something deeper than just visuals. It's bringing something what could tell the story, not just tell you, wow, how wonderful this um, kind of still life is painted. Sorry, we can't paint still lives anymore. It's, it's, it's a great process, to be honest. I spent years with uh, oils uh, and just painted yeah, some should. still, still lives. It's yeah. great, but you can't continue this journey because this chapter is finished and everything was set. Okay, going further. Well, let me, let me, let me add why, to that really quickly, sorry, because I love what you're yes, saying there. Yep. I would say if anybody's listening to this and, is, and, and gets fulfillment and joy and, and the process of actually creating still lifes or paintings or anything, portraits, you should indefinitely just do that because that's your pursuit of happiness. But what we're talking about, and I just, because I want to make sure we're not trying to sound like elitists here, I think that what's really important yeah. because, because you can quickly go that Maxime has a different quest than me, a different quest from you listening to this. Uh, and, and I think what he's after and pursuing is a novel approach of going into the ether, the unknown beyond and, and seeing that. And so I just want to care. I don't want to preface that just so it didn't seem like we were just like, that's not art or whatever, because we don't know what art is. Even if we can define no, it, definitely. Yeah. That's why people love yes, the JPEG yes. and all these things, and people uh, support a banana stuck to a wall and the concept of these things. And uh, you know, it's definitely it's, it's a, com it's a it, it kind of goes beyond uh, the 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 because you know when I, I had this revelation when I was in the Louvre, looking at all these masterpieces from humans that were far superior to me in skill. And I was going through and embracing and experiencing all of this beautiful work, and I thought to myself. Oh wow! This is all. I got to choose my words clear. It's it's propaganda for the church, and then I thought to myself, "Wow, that's so fascinating." <laughs> and then I saw artists that were working beyond the church, and it was very rare, right? Because in that day, everything was so small. And when I saw artists actually yeah. infusing these interesting compositions where they were hiding things and they were thinking, and I thought, "Wow, fascinating!" You know, and and and, and so anyways art has progressed and, and changed and it's lost its way in a lot of capacities in regards to usable things, but it's also evolved beyond that too. And we're in this really weird space where you said you have to be inventive. You have to be curious. And, and if you're willing to go into building what the art needs to be in the future, which no one really knows, we're kind of evolving that as we go. <laughs> so which is fascinating, but I, I apologize again. I just wanted to, to, to step in there and say that. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you, Ash. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, the, the concept here is definitely not to harm anyone yeah. and tell that this is the bad or this is the good. There is no bad and good in this story. We're Personal just truth. talking about 
um, yes, we're talking about like in science. If you are uh, getting some wonderful uh, feelings of uh, just going through um, some calculations and all this stuff, it's yeah. good. But to making some breakthroughs, you need to kind of just get it and move in a little bit different direction. And uh, that's how the true science is, is, is works, that you need to get everything what previously been done. You need to understand it, make your own research and then go into the completely different direction and go alone because nobody is here close to you. This is really loneliness. This is painful. This is really, really terrible time when you, you cry. I cried a, a, a couple of times. Uh, kind of, I, I felt pain. This is not the art as some people think that, you know, you're just so happy. Like this, you know, these Instagram happy painters. I love them, really. I want to do be these Instagram happy painters. When they're just smiling and making this uh, oil uh, painting. So Guys, I love you all and, and girls uh, especially. <laughs> but, you know, I just... <laughs> I whoa, just whoa, can't, whoa. you know. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah, uh, I, I just can't because kind of my journey is a little bit different, and I'm just sharing my yeah. journey. And well, I you're met an alien a Nobel Prize. You're a total alien. Yes, yes. So I, I met a Nobel Prize winner. Uh, he's Russian, but he he lives not in Russia and probably in London. He he invented graphene, it's two dimensional material. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, he, he, he won a Nobel Prize um, and uh, uh, we chatted and uh, we had a project together and he's, uh, he described me what, what actually the science is. Science is just going into the place where is nobody close and no one can help you. You just feel fucking alone. Mm, just the, the, the kind of you, you like in the whole and just it's it's a prison you know this mental prison you, you you can't go outside because you already put yourself inside and no one can help you only you can make it maybe or maybe not you know it's a kind of great, great irony of the journey and you kind of go through this pain through these years through this spending through this crying through this this kind of these people who just try to help you but they're not helping you they just trying to help you or just trying to looks like they trying to help you and all this jazz and and you go and believe and believe a different poster on my wall. Uh, and, you need and, a bunch uh, of those in the office. Various. I want to believe. Yeah, yes, everyone. And it's yes. just, it's just <laughs> science. <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, in the very end, when um, kind of the, 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 the irony of this process that when you get the answer, that when you crack the code, it's not the victory because you're so ruined. It's like final of marathon. You just... Your, your, your body is torn, your, your soul is just damaged and you're sitting and ha, ha, okay, I made it. This is the happiest moment in my life. No fucking way this is not happiest moment in my life. It was happy when I was alone. No way. But I, I can't just live in, in the different way. I just, after this moment, I know what I will do. I will pack some my belongings and went in the different journey. That's how I work. That's how I, my brain works. And that's why I, I really, really love these uh, people who just love to paint. Yeah. I really love, but I just can't. Why Something can't you? Wrong with my, have you figured that out? Because I'm know, the same. Have you, uh, I just feel that uh, you wanna uh, go, being you there. You want to go further, don't you? Yes, being there. It's like, you know, yeah. boom, being there, yeah. move forward. Do you think it's you'll ever be happy? Because like I have this problem too. No, no. What, what is happiness? Uh, I, I suppose is happiness a weakness. Uh, happiness is 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 the um, no. Probably happiness is is a different form of happiness. <laughs> is a kind of more 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 you, you know. You get kind of poster crazy. for that. Happiness is a different kind of happiness. <laughs> you got meta with me there. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah, you know it's uh, it's uh, the process when you struggle and when you find some clues. Yeah. 
And when you find some answers and you tell, it's not the thing that, you know, this form of happiness that, ha. Ah, yeah, well, that's a different form. It's the form yeah. of happiness. That's good. Yes, it's a form of happiness that, oh my God, oh my God, yeah, I found it. It's a, it's a kind of crazy Accomplishment happiness. then. Accomplishment is attached to the happiness. Yeah. Yes, it's probably. probably you know, you, know you in this flow it's a flow yeah. rather than just a, a feeling that you are somewhere and you can relax never relax yeah. a good and the bad story but probably kindly only only we can do this particular way of stuff like kind of you can spend years uh, weeks just scrabbling thinking about films just making the whole um kind of notebooks with uh, sketches with some frames ideas it's a kind of you know this m maniac approach yeah. is that's what i really love that's what the, the only one thing which i really kind of l l love in this life is this kind of obsessiveness yeah. that's you, feel, when you people don't feel is alone not just, you know when you see another human obsess and make something <laughs> yes definitely you feel it in the art too. definitely I, I went to um I was in Miami and I went to this art thing and there was all these quote unquote famous artists and stuff. And I don't really know much about the art that's there, but I would yeah. I forget the name of the artist, but I would look at everything and I saw this one artist and I, I felt that obsessiveness in it. And I was like, ah, that's cool. <laughs> I feel like yeah, okay, that's, that's my, my kin, okay. that's my brother, my sister, whatever. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. I really like, you know, the, you can feel it in the art. You know, art is always pure and true when you really feel it. Um, and it's also, you know, just a part of the process of, of seeing and observing other art. This is something I'll say that I think you'll really love. This is a saying that I, I discovered, at, you know, five in the morning or something. Every time I sit down <laughs> and make art, usually it's a, I get excited and I have an idea and then I just dive into it. And I, you know, it's like you put a big goal out there and you kind of work towards it. And, and every night you chip away a little bit. And what I realized is I was, my brain was dumping dopamine in because I was getting enjoyment and I would go into the stage where I would like breathing, meditating, you know? And then I thought to myself, when you're the drug and the drug dealer, it gets very, uh, crazy. <laughs> so I'm just sitting there as a drug dealer and a drug and I'm like feeding myself this drug and I, and I get so addicted to it. I'm literally addicted to making art because I love, I love that experience that I have with doing it. So, rewarding and it's so hard and it's so exhausting and so frustrating but at the same time i'm so thankful that i'm almost 40 now i've been doing my art my whole life my ever my earliest memory same as you drawing and being creative and um you know there was moments in my life where i hated being an artist and i hated myself that i loved art and there was moments that i was very frustrated that i uh, that i chose this hard path to do but now when i look at it i go ah, i don't care if i'm ever very wealthy or have all these things i'm so wealthy inside and it's giving me a lot of strength a yeah. lot of in internal um power yeah it's so lovely drug dealer <laughs> drug consumer <laughs> the drug <Yeah. laughs> uh, and the space where you're getting yeah. drug it's a kind of everything you, yeah. you know it's, it's so lovely the same story and i suppose your podcast is is that's why you're doing this stuff right to to kind of to keep this obsessiveness and to find this craziness in in people and find that you are not yeah, alone yeah. right and these people are not alone that okay here they are i'm not kind of alone yes. in this uh, small cage <laughs> of kind of creativity this is wonderful it's a kind of club of um this it's a universal club too. I realized, yeah, I didn't realize the effect of this podcast until I stopped doing it, and the amount of people that I had no because I don't with the podcast. It's just like my art. I try to keep it as pure as possible. I don't look at statistics. I don't promote. I don't care about that stuff. If it's good and it resonates with somebody, that's all that matters. Good things have life of their own. It's like you have a really wonderful seed of a thought. You throw it out there, and then you come back next season there's flowers everywhere either that you come back and there's no flowers you go well it wasn't a value that's not my problem i just put it out there you know and so i think i think not having any strings attached to this thing not 
promoting it, not using it as a device to main, make money. It's more pure. And then the conversations, I never edit the conversations ever unless a, unless a, a guest says, please remove that. I've only edited like one or two episodes because like, oh, they were afraid of what they were saying was going to cause them harm. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, I think the podcast is that. I, and, and when I stopped doing it, I felt like um, a part of my soul had left a little bit. Like I had given up on the idea that I wasn't alone or that I had, I had enough. And it's not the fact. The fact is that I can never stop these conversations. They're wonderful. I love talking with creatives and friends like yourself and seeing what makes you move. Because when I'm at four or four or five in the morning making, I'm thinking about what you said and I'm, I'm processing, I'm, I'm chewing on it and I'm like digesting it and thinking about it, you know? And yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah. It's never ending. Yeah. (laughs) It's a, this thing is so fucking wild. What is your thoughts now on this space? The space that we're in this, um, you're now, I, I, and I knew it when this, this NFT stuff kind of kicked off. I was like, oh yeah, this is a perfect thing for Maxime. I think this is a great thing for you at the same time. I'm curious what it's been like as a process for you to go through this. <laughs> to be honest, I cried <laughs> when I heard, you know, it's, it, it was a tough moment. It was like a kind of complete end of of something pure, uh, which kind of I spent almost all my, my uh, adult life. And I remember that that, that moment I, I came. So I started to, to hear about NFTs from Marcelo Baldin, uh, Combustion. He, he started to throw me some messages and other people started to, to tell me about NFTs. And I was, no. What yeah, is the same. Going? Mike no, was telling I mean, me about it months no. before, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm busy. I got other things to do." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yes. Sorry, yes. <laughs> I uh, want to. Yes, believe. Yeah. and it was. Yes, and uh, we, we got some messages from from biggest uh, NFT platforms two years ago, kind of before the the whole story, but we were too kind of maybe self concentrated. Do you have and, regret uh, with that? I remember. Does that grieve you? No, no, no. Totally. Mm. No, uh, I'm, I'm totally okay. I, I just, uh, what I felt that uh, uh, I tried to kind of stay away because with Igor, he is my kind of best um, X-ray vision to the, to, to the reality. Every time I can get a little bit biased or my kind of vision could be a little bit uh, transformed, but Igor can tell, nah, sorry, no, let's, let's keep this thing. Mm. And I really love yeah. this thing. It's, it's like your own kind of special uh, ability, which I do not have, but he is the person who always kind of make the things right. And no, probably let's keep this <laughs> thing. So, Good. and uh, I try to listen and when we, kind of checked out everything we were oh my god no let's let's just be as far as possible uh from that's what the fine art world was doing and yeah yes and uh (laughs) definitely and i had a um the journey to my um kind of house outside of moscow and uh, i came back with my wife and um i remember that i just took my phone and read the story about Christie's sale and I almost started to cry because not because of this sale, not because of this money. No, it's it's it doesn't matter. But well, does, only because but yeah, oh, because of only one thing that life will never be the yeah. same and we will meet so dramatic thing and I I'm kind of me as me at the moment I'm dead because I need to make some some kind of completely different stuff and it will be big changes in my life and I will be never be the same person with the same kind of naive ideas that I can make my own art films for the sake of art films for the sake of that I feel that way just go away I that's what I love to do there will be never never ever way i tried to explain to my wife she was kind of 
okay, so good for him, good for... I don't, no, can't you understand? This is kind of so transformative. <laughs> Next day, paradigm tomorrow, shift. Yeah. paradigm shift tomorrow, everyone will tell that they are NFT mm -hmm. artists. It will or be kind artists, of the, even worse. Yeah. Digital yeah. artist, yeah. yes. The whole story which I spent 20 <laughs> years just every day living, breathing, <laughs> just making yeah. and talking to people from galleries that this is digital and they asked me what is digital and I just <laughs> spent through the whole these stories and now everything will be different. Uh, it, it was probably one of the biggest emotions in my life because I just felt that Everything is dead. <laughs> all this purity, all and this, uh, yes, everything is 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 completely different. Will be different. Will be life, but completely different one. Kind of, we got legs for this creature, and now it's just uh, stood up from, and it's just started to run. Oh my fucking god! What is going on? So this kid analogy. started to yeah. run. Oh my yeah. God! Yeah, so let's wait a little bit. It's start, start, starting to use some bad words and other stuff. So th it's a growing uh, organism, you know. What the hell? And we thought that it will be only, you know, this uh, pooping yeah. stuff and just uh, making these small steps. And uh, I use Alien as we a movie kind example. Of, you remember Alien? So digital art yeah. was the face hugger inside the egg. And then, yeah. And then the bit. The, this is Raw! no, no. So it's in the egg, and this is our little egg, right? And then the yeah. human comes in, and that's the blockchain. And then the face hugger grabs the face, and then it comes out of the chest. That's that's Chris. That's the Christie's event. And okay. then now it's the xenomorph, and it's killing. Now I'm here. Yeah, and I will be bigger. Wonderful. Yeah. Energy. So the the universal story. Yeah, it's, it's a great yeah. one. <laughs> yes, we have the pr pretty much the same, but mine uh, has a little bit less blood. But uh, yeah, of course, kind of, make it a joke. I, uh, my my tears had some yeah. blood. Yes, uh, it, yeah. So probably this is something what we we extremely. Yeah, happy. I was really happy that it was that Mike. We, I was really happy that Mike was the one to receive the first yes. thing because I he has dealt with it so so well. I feel like he's dealt with it better than any of us would have dealt with it because if you think Damn, that the way his maturity through the approach and being himself still i recently had a chance to go visit him in his space that he's building out in charleston yeah. and yeah. it's i've known mike for 10 years now through the internet through his art and then getting a chance to spend time with him and knowing him more and then seeing how this whole thing hasn't evolved him in a bad way it's made him better in a way and i can't believe how <coughs> how does somebody do that you could be so corrupt by this but he's chosen to do this yeah it's, it's really it's fascinating i, I really admire it's like a frodo and the ring yeah. right yeah. it's a it's a kind of yeah. this one you can, can you imagine how, it, how violent it, it, it you could, could be and how horrible you could be and how you could push all your agendas yes and i think it's because mike has always been himself this whole time and i, I don't know i <laughs> he would have to tell us this I don't want to just assume, but I feel like he, he, uh, he's still just being his true self with just, just being like a silly guy that likes to make art and be silly and make people laugh, you know? And I feel like that's a, that's his pure essence. I think you, yours is different than his and this from, from mine, but I'm really glad that he was the one to, to get it first because if he wasn't the one, it would be really, uh, bad, <laughs> you know, I, yeah. Definitely, uh, definitely. I uh, immediately kind of think about uh, Notch and the Minecraft story. I don't know that. You know no, the I story? Know story. Yeah. No, uh, please uh, check it out. So he sold his company for almost two billions. Oh, uh, this is the video Mojang. game Minecraft. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Minecraft. I've never played. Yes, it, the so, guy. Yeah. Okay, so he, so but you can't understand oh, how yeah. big I think it my daughter is, played right? It, yeah, and. Yes, and uh, he went completely nuts. He just this money changed his personality. Yeah, he 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 got divorced. He kind of started to bid for a house 
uh, which Jay Z and Beyonce wanted to buy and uh, overbid and bought it and started to live with completely different sure. life. And uh, it, it's a film on oh, YouTube uh, about yes, it's it's really nice uh, from the very beginning how geeky he was with computers and how happy he was that oh just look I just <laughs> used this uh, script in Python just look how it works and he's so happy sitting in some somewhere in the middle of nowhere uh, and just making video What's games and what, art what's the thing and called? I want to watch it I, uh, maybe history of Mojang. Uh, and you know it's it's so pure and he's so kind of his but then all this story is just totally it's it's not even totally broke him but now microsoft even uh had a lawsuit crazy suit and uh they uh banned even smallest mentioning that he has any connection to the game because he started to make some really crazy statements in Twitter, uh, some really crazy hate speech. So this money and all this yeah. story broke his completely. Uh, and unraveled it's, him. It's Maybe kind he was of always the... that person inside though, you know? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. My wife, I had a lot of uh, discussions with my wife about uh, Notch because the story was so big and I was kind of really, I, I don't know why, but I got somehow connected to this story and I thought about it, how money and ca how fame could ruin your life, you, your creative life, you sitting in your home, you, you, you making your life. Just imagine this crazy weird social experiment that someone will give you a card with endless amount yeah. of money. Not 70 millions, not 100 millions, not 1 billion, just endless amount of yeah. money. What will be next day, in one week, in one year? So this is probably the biggest uh, challenges which human mind probably can get if he's not uh, prepared well, for this Look at it thing. now with how I we use AI. It's like we have an abundance of <laughs> yeah. infinites. Then we were seeing the dawn of an artificial sentient being being created and people are just using it like some sort of weird device. It's like, I think, and this is just knowing Mike, I, and I think what makes Mike capable of, of harnessing this level of responsibility is because he was older when he received this, so he was more developed as a person, and also he has yep. uh, deep ties and connections to a loving family who is his base. And I think his wife and his kids and his mom and his dad and his in-laws and his brother They've all given him this brother. Yeah, I mean, definitely. yeah, his brother, him and his brother, they, they are partners in all this stuff yeah. and they work together. And, and yeah. I think that if you don't have that, if you're alone and you receive the God card, wow, you have a big problem. You need to have something yeah. that grounds you to reality. But at the same time, like I said, I think maybe he was always that person inside, you know, you never know. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. My wife uh, said that probably, yes, uh, with the story with Norch, so he made the game just to to make probably the benefits which the game can bring and when he got it yeah. done i already made it it was just a step but uh with mike i met mike um two times uh last year and probably um kind of uh, it, it was in italy and um, we, we spent uh, some time together uh, and it, it was really nice how this new NFT uh, hysteria and all this stuff just made, uh, made it possible, made possible for these geeky people to connect in Venice Biennale. Yeah. Yeah. So this is such a kind Beautiful, of though. post, post uh, crazy world. Yes, definitely, it's, it's amazing. But um, speaking to Mike, is is something different and to his brother and uh so we spoke a couple of hours and definitely he's the person who who had something in in his background because kind of years ago uh it was a couple of projects where i was involved and he was involved we worked on the biggest launches of different products 
he was uh, involved in biggest concerts in the world. He worked with biggest artists. So he was already not a guy from yes. the street. It, it's not a kind of coincidence. Yeah. And he already knew how to keep this crazy right. pace. So probably this is definitely the good story. Yeah, because yeah, people just think that he um, came out of nowhere and was sure. just doing random things. But yes. yeah, that wasn't the case. He was quite prolific, always doing stuff and always making things at a very high level. So this isn't all accident. It just kind of manifested in a perfect storm, you know, yes. a lightning storm. So yeah, which is true. I think that's what it added up to it. I'm going to watch this Minecraft thing. I'm, I always, I know it's bad of me, but I love to watch these things because it's good to see somebody unravel and see what not to do and how how to actually hold sovereignty to your life you know i think that i'm really blessed in my life i have a wonderful wife and um we spend a lot of our time together just talking about life and really questioning everything and and how we feel about things and i think if you don't have you know even if you have a friend or somebody that's close that you can kind of unravel your mind to i think it's it causes you a lot of harm it's really important to have that we're social creatures, you know, it's really important to have the gift of good friendship. Like you said, uh, your, your, your partner and, and your wife as well, like giving you these gifts of reality so that you can be the teenager so that you can go to the pure place, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard, it's hard to manage. Yes, definitely. This foundation. Yes. Yes, definitely. This foundation. And, um, I, I can't even recall where I got this phrase, but it works pretty cool that to be artist, to be the big artist, you can't be an artist. And I was, oh my God, what the bullshit, what is going on? And when I started to think about this thing, I realized that, so probably who, crazy pace, you need to be like this uh, crazy athlete. You need to build these crazy muscles and to go and uh, use this idea that just do it and, uh, and run. No matter, it's raining, Doesn't it's matter. sunny, it's your birthday, it's just someone is just died. And yes, things happen every day and you need to just keep this crazy pace. And it's, it's impossible nowadays for artists to, to kind of be close to this story because it's a crazy political thing in yeah. some point. It's a kind of the galleries, the museums and curators and all this stuff. It's everywhere. Yeah. And you need to kind of understand the essence of this stuff. You need to understand the essence of um, kind of uh, money and how to kind of smartly invest in yourself, believe in something, not to get completely out of money and ruin your life and your family life. So it's, it's so multidimensional. You need to kind of go through crazy amount of stuff and yes i agree with this statement to be an artist you can't be just an artist you can't you just need to get crazy amount of hats you know and always kind of change the hats okay now i need four hours of grounding because tomorrow morning i'm meeting mcgregor so it, it, it's true tomorrow i'm meeting one of the best kind of the best choreographer in the world. Tomorrow morning, this is so wonderful moment for me because kind of the chemical brother, uh, I, I'm sure you remember the clip where a girl uh, dancing and she's starting to kind of be semi-transparent with the yep. structure and uh, other projects. This is the guy behind. And so, uh, for example, um, a Radiohead music video where uh, Tom York is dancing on a stage um, uh, with uh, kind of uh, with a girl. So uh, all these projects uh, made by uh, McGregor and um, uh, tomorrow morning I'm meeting him and this is kind of crazy big moment in my life because I really really respect what he's doing and it's kind of you know if, if you are just an artist and you listen uh, to this idea and oh my god tomorrow I will meet him oh my god I will just go and drink some alcohol or get some drugs but it's impossible because you you kind of completely lose your track uh lose your next meetings and lose your kind of net perception of uh kind of next steps a week ago i met uh, maxim from prodigy and, and it was oh my god he, he just came to my studio and we we spoke about art i was in the middle of nowhere and um on the top of my bed it was a poster with the prodigy, yeah. with the Maxim on front. And I was, oh my God, 
He's so great. In my school, everyone just made these jokes that, hey, you Maxim, uh, uh, that's why your parents named you because you are such a fan of Maxim from Prodigy. And I was that, you know, that everyone made these jokes in this in the middle of nowhere. And now I'm just in London and meet my kind of uh, hero of my um, kind of early uh, days when I decided to start to making electronic music. And now he's just here. And uh, he, uh, we speak about virtual reality, about art, about galleries. And uh, in, in a couple of hours, I have a, a different meeting with the other, my child hero. And it's just going in this crazy pace yeah. here. And just imagine if you were an artist and you were so emotional, like, okay, so I met my kind of hero. I will go and drink something. Okay, done. End of story. You know, and well, look uh, what your curiosity has got again. You. Yeah, your curiosity yeah. and desire yeah. to do it. I agree with your sentiment that we as artists have to not just be artists anymore. We cannot. I actually think more of my approach as an athlete more than anything. And my other passion in life yeah. right now is cycling. I got really into this thing called time trial cycling, where I would build these crazy bikes that are very um, aerodynamic, but you put everything you have into the bike and the pain and the pressure. And you can quantify it by your effort, by like mathematical watts and aerodynamic CDAs and all these like math. It's a fucking wow. cool thing. It's another thing to love. And it's also <laughs> something that's completely, it takes me out of the office, out of the creative space. And my brain, you know, when, when, when Einstein was formulating his theories, he would stop and play the violin. I think it's very important for the brain. Yeah. Or you know how our brain works as a, you know how this works as a network. And that's what makes it so special. It's a full on network that works and things are firing in, in random order. So when you take that random order that's constantly firing in that one space and you shift it and go, no brain, fire here. And then when you come back to the other thing, it, it makes a mistake. And then that mistake, a new th idea happens. The new idea is potentially opening up the door and the portal. And that life force that you're talking about is when you meet your heroes or meet people that have irony to you that are very special and ironic and something that gives you value you know so i i think it's really important artists nowadays you can't just be an artist maybe you can there's no rules you could do whatever you want of course but i think to be successful <laughs> yeah. to be i always look at da vinci is, is always my favorite example of my favorite idea of a human a very curious a very passionate a very honest a very raw a very direct smart human being who questioned things and you didn't just question things like, you know, a lot of people question things now. And I think it's a big problem because they don't find answers themselves. They find them on YouTube or the internet, which is filled with lies. The internet is like 90% lies and noise and they find their answers there. No, you should find it inside yourself by discovering the facts within. And, uh, anyways, it's a tangent rant, but that stuff is fascinating to me. And I love that. That's, I'm really happy for you that you're meeting, these people you know and hopefully you guys are getting this energy together there's a reason why you're meeting those people at this time in your life you know yeah yeah yes definitely it's a it's a pretty wonderful how our passion and our belief with our uh, invisible posters of uh, believing um, into this um, digital story brought us into this very very frontier, right, of creativity, of possibilities. And uh, I remember that last time when we spoke three years ago, um, you told about the same stories that you use your bicycle and it's a ridiculously long journeys for hours when you just go through wonderful sights and experience this disconnection and that's what is going on you still making this wonderful stuff you still making this stuff which helps you to 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 be here and to create to continue this wonderful journey and it's it's so lovely that you kind of work as an athlete right you just spend time and not change this fundamental stuff. You keep them and you kind of 
make with them this wonderful foundation for building on top, for making explorations and other stuff. And the same story with Mike and uh, with Yeah, Mike's quite an athlete with I, his approach to art too. He's, yeah. he's very, man, he's definitely, yeah, his approach is getting it done. And that's an athlete's approach. That's not a, a, a traditional artist. When we grew up, an artist was, I will make it when I feel it. But you know, yeah. when you, that's a yeah. bad problem because you, what you're doing is you're saying that I am not in control. And when you say you're not in control, that's a really scary life because if you're not in control, then who is? No yeah, one yeah. Is. The, the muse concept, yeah. right? It's a kind of, today I do not feel it. Ah, you have you to just do it. Uh, need to, yes, yeah. yes, definitely create this yeah. muscle which can build something different on completely different yeah. level, on the level of researcher. And probably this story is about kind of merging two brains together that something emotional, something fast and unpredictable and something logical and something with nice uh, concept of stepping uh, in the future. When they will be together, something great will happen. You will control your creativity, only you and creativity will engine your own kind of wonderful flow, how to go through life, how to make things, how to continue and grow through the steps. It's definitely the wonderful journey and uh, kind of we're so lucky to be right here in the very epicenter. Of I love your raw energy and of all this stuff. It's really it's really um, giving me a lot of energy and I'm sure everybody that's listening to this conversation as well, which I think is really good. <laughs> I, w I have three questions. Um, one of them is, what is your okay. schedule like? This is a question that I know you loved hearing from this other fascinating person and I'm sure that people are listening to this are fascinated about your life and what you're doing. So what is a, like how do you manage to summon the 17 year old but also be present in spirit with your family and then with your business partner and juggling all yeah. these things and meeting these celebrities and, and people from your past. How do you, how do you manage that? Yeah. Uh, I found this, um, schedule, which I'm trying to change a little bit, but I wake up about three 30, uh, I am, and I spent two hours or two and a half hours, um, just making deep research. Uh, at the moment, I'm going through a couple of big uh, explorations. One, uh, one of journey is um, system thinking approach and um, kind of analytic thinking courses, which I take to kind of make my uh, this um, sometimes too free uh, imaginative mind be a little bit more structurized. And I spent a couple of hours every morning with this um, journey. And uh, then I have a couple of hours with my laptop at home, uh, just making some ideas and um, going through some feedback for my team. Because I have two teams, uh, two studios. It's a media work, it's a design studio, but Igor at the moment is more kind of person who's supervising the whole media work and I'm just uh, making some suggestions uh, as a kind of creative director of the main tra trajectory of moving of the company. Um, but sometimes uh, I'm present on the calls with clients um, and uh, my, uh, my art studio, Jeskov studio, is a little bit different uh, people. Uh, which I found to to create not to have um, kind of connections to media work because it's important to totally allow people to emerge in this particular area of responsibilities. And um, I have wonderful team in Jeskov studio and wonderful team in media work studio. So it's a kind of really, really to my um, uh, to like uh, two kids. I have two boys and I have two studios. Yeah, four kids. And, um, <laughs> yeah, four kids yeah. now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> four yeah. children. Yeah. Some yeah, of them definitely. are more hungry than yeah. others. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, what I'm doing uh, then through this um, kind of um, conceptualization and bringing some stuff uh, and answering 
um, just uh, morning run and then I go to work. Um, I live uh, close to Regent Park, it's a uh, north part of London and my studio is in Shoreditch and it's, it's a right part of London, it's close to Barbican um, and it's um, about one hour and a half of walk and I use this time with really fast walk to the studio and listening to some podcasts about uh, physics, about um, art, about technologies, c kind of completely different topics. That's what I love to kind of get be um, kind of get to, you know kind of be close to completely different topics uh, to kind of uh, have these different points of interaction mm -hmm. with the life. And then it's um, quite early morning. I have a breakfast somewhere uh, close to studio and I have some crazy amount of um, um, paper with me all the time and some uh, notebooks and I just scrabble. Okay, so this is the idea. That's what I think would be great. And um, usually I use completely different uh, things. Some, I, I use um, actually things free a lot. I just, uh, with my phone, I just always um, typing something. Uh, when I uh, had a journey to, to our podcast, I started, I was in Metro and I started to uh, think about the um, kind of dying. Uh, and uh, I started to uh, write down ideas about the art project, uh, about kind of editions. And uh, you do not know how long they will live. It's like NFTs, which will die and you do not know when, so you, you can just uh, buy them, but they can immediately die. And it's so interesting that at the moment we think about art as about something what we can uh, keep when we die. But what the hell? Why, why should we think with this uh, concept? What, what if we can reverse and see how our art dies right, right now and how collectors can, can behave knowing that probably this is kind of last days of your uh, thing uh, or something. So just completely different ideas. And then when I'm in studio, uh, a couple of hours of deep work before uh, people came here, I, I work uh, in, um, in the building of W1 Curates. They gave me a wonderful space here and I just sit and meet wonderful people every day. And uh, the building is quite big and I can go completely crazy here. It's a crazy uh, screen walls. It's a kind of hundreds of meters of screen walls. I can just uh, go really, really wow. crazy here. And uh, five completely packed sound recording studios in the basement. Uh, highest end possible. And uh, they are so crazy high end that uh, can you imagine the whole rooms are levitating. They are not wow. touching the initial building that you, you can make the, the loudest sound possible and staying close to, to the uh, recording room, you will hear nothing. So sometimes I just go there and spend a couple of hours just uh, writing down some ideas and uh, uh, thinking about music and uh, other stuff. Then some meetings, um, uh, probably this is what I got from Max Richter. Uh, it's a love Max Richter, uh, and um, uh, I do not, uh, I do not know him personally. But as you mentioned, it's kind of silent, silent mentor, uh, yeah. teacher, a silent yeah. mentor. Yes, I, I I read a lot about his uh, schedules, and he once said that kind of he spent half of day just making yeah. music and thinking about music and being a musician, and then noon and he just uh, go and speak to people have some conversations emails threads uh, talking radio stations everything and um, <clears throat> this is so kind of I, I felt something quite resonating in this idea and that's what I'm trying to do I'm trying to keep uh, some time with the the deepest uh, work mode and some time with the shallowest work more when I just talk to people and trying to be a different person, a uh, person who, who can speak and who enjoy to just uh, speaking and not always thinking at the moment that, oh my God, at the moment I can just make something uh, with computers. No, I just trying to, to enjoy these moments and kind of, as you uh, said that, 
okay, we need to get some new information and uh, make our brains work and get this electricity with this interconnectivity. And then uh, I have um, <clears throat> um, uh, road to, to, kinder, uh, to school when I took my kids uh, from school and uh, bring them to home and we spend three hours just talking and making some crazy stuff. My uh, oldest son, he is six at the moment. And when I um, moved uh, to, to recording podcast now, he asked, father, can you give me an iPad? I want to start uh, learning uh, Python. I was, Python, what are you talking about? Uh, he said, yes, yes, I heard a lot that <clears throat> all games are made in Python. I just want to start start learning Python because I feel that Scratch is for kids. And like, oh my God, wow, okay, six years old. here you go, learn <laughs> Python. Yes, uh, it's, it's a completely different story. Oh my God. <laughs> These are your, those are your best uh, projects, yes. those kids. Yeah, those are the ones yes, that are going to change yes. so many things about who you are if you're looking and paying attention to it. Yeah, it's so hard yes, because being yes, an artist I'm is a very selfish, to. insular thing. It's 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 opposite Definitely. to child rearing, like to, to raising a child is opposite to that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it's impossible, I suppose. Again, it's impossible to be an artist and to have kids yeah. because this is kind of life damaging thing. I just want to art. Just yeah. leave me alone. I want to listen to Max yeah. Richter. Max Richter, listen to some shitty music, as you uh, told uh, years ago that your daughter loved Katy Perry and all this. <clears throat> <laughs> weird stuff that yes that's what they love to yeah. listen they <clears throat> they don't care about affix twin <laughs> and all this uh, stuff yeah. and uh, yes uh, and it's pretty uh, kind of crazy stuff but I'm trying to um, kind of make this meta um, meta concepts when I I allow them to watch something on YouTube if these things by David Attenborough or something about physics and they feel that huh, so YouTube is pretty interesting I can uh, listen to uh, Sir David Attenborough about some uh, weird plants and all yeah. this stuff it's really nice when you kind of um, make this corridor of possibilities and in this corridor is no um, stupid stuff they feel kind of quite smart stuff as the fun stuff. It is so sure. kind of tricky. Well, they're and, young uh, now though, right? Yeah. Like four and six years old. Yeah. Four and yeah. six. It's yeah. It's a wonderful age though. Yeah. And yeah. Six to eight is like the best. It's so great because you have so much impression time where you can really f harness and really focus their energy and intention and and you're such an important part of their life. It changes with each year. It's, the cycle changes so much. You'll see every kid's different, but yeah, my daughter's almost 18, so I'm pretty far ahead. Yeah, it's a whole different life. Yeah, yeah. It's a whole different life. I remember, I remember photos when, uh, <laughs> when she was just maybe kind of, yeah, seven, five or something. Yes, uh, it's, oh my God. It definitely grows. <laughs> it's a... Uh, it's a yeah crazy crazy time yeah. flies yeah and uh, then I, I I just go to sleep at nine nine well if you're up at three or yeah you're in at nine yes six and a half hours That's or seven good. is something what what I have as a kind of da daily thing but I'm I'm trying to kind of maybe explore some different uh, timings. Uh, maybe half part, uh, sleep a day a little bit, maybe an hour or two to hack the system and to have a kind of second shift uh, through the night for three hours or four. Not sure how it works, but we'll try definitely because a kind of having all these different activities and uh, uh, thinking and being kind of not just uh, a body of a father, or a body of a husband or a body of a business partner uh, kind of it's, it's it's a little bit different stuff that um, kind of I, I need to be involved in all the pr I love that you walk I so love that you sleep enough I love that you walk I love that you live in a place where your creative is in a social community place I think that all of these things are sound so awesome and they sound like a perfect place for you to be in your birth you're in your best in your best level of yourself operating at a high level, which is really important because if you're in a high communal social experiment with people, 
it kind of brings out a lot of things. It's also really amazing and important that you spend the first couple hours of your day in a meditative, quiet, solo space, p- pulling out the essence of yourself. I think that's really difficult for most people to do and to have the discipline to do that because everything in your life now, whether you agree with me or not, is not by luck or by chance. I think a lot of it, if not all of it, is a manifestation and it's you deciding to do yeah. what you're doing at a high level or a low level. It's just your decision. It's your decision making and how you take your time and how you manage it, you know? So taking yourself from, and I don't know, I'm not sure, but you were not a wealthy person, a child in, in Russia. I think you've managed to manifest a life and this is all your choices. So an optimistic yeah. choice. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. And I love this concept. Uh, we, we, we have these jokes um, in studio that the, the best thing what you can do with design studio uh, is design your design studio. It's a kind of, again, meta thing. You, you need to design your life to be able to design a design studio. You know, it's a kind of such a multi-level thing. But I, I definitely agree that to create something completely different on the highest levels, you need to be like a kind of the biggest athlete with the crazy diet. I, I try to fast um, uh, once a week uh, for 36 hours and um, a couple of days a week I, I fast uh, for maybe 18 hours and then I, I don't eat meat. I, I don't drink alcohol, I don't smoke, and you know, it's it's a little bit uh, weird. Does, S- that seem, sometimes does it seem like it helps I, I give you clarity, this fasting? Yeah. Yes, definitely, yes, yes, fasting is what I found, and it was just bring the biggest moments of joy, uh, lastly, because uh, your brain is so active when it's hungry and your kind of inner animal is just okay what should i do to eat what what maybe maybe this is it can i can i chew this thing and you know it's so fast and it's you know like you 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 get five times faster or something and especially when you run early morning when you got uh uh, 10 kilometers yes and after all this stuff you just uh, fasting and your body is just in completely different way. And again, it's athlete things. It's impossible for just, you know, okay, so I just spent 20 years with crazy passion. No way, because the drugs and all this stuff is really, really close. And you just need to make two or three wrong steps and everything ruined, everything. So it's just every day. It's yeah, you, you said it really, really uh, great that it's a kind of, it's not uh, coincidence. It's, it's a kind of design of everything. Yes, and it's design and it's everyday design in this design process because you need to always kind of tweak something to, to kind of to test it. Is it works? Is it works by chance? Or is it kind of true uh, working thing? Or I can just get rid of this thing and work this way. No, it d- doesn't work. Okay, let's bring it back. It's a kind of, you know, always just trying this thing. Oh, maybe I can just uh, skip once, um, once a week sleep. No, I will be just ruined next day. And all my meetings and all my uh, feedback and all my uh, kind of studio members will just feel that I'm just terrible. In, in the, in the cycling working. world, we call it marginal gains. They also say it for like automotive. You know the term marginal gains? It's nope. the littlest things, they all add up. So if you add 1% of all of these things that you could improve, at the end, you might have a 50% increase. Marginal gains, little things wow. that you add to your day. Wow, yeah. lovely. Yeah, and this is what I mean by cross-pollinating ideas and different practices and intensities of curiosity me being really into cycling my wife laughs at me so i i was into mountain biking and then i hurt myself and then so i got a single bike that was just for the street and then i started riding it and i said oh maybe i can do 10 miles in 30 minutes and then i started doing that and i was like okay now how can how can my next goal is how can i do 10 miles and less than 20 so then i was like oh i need a bike that has this and this particular thing and i have to train like this and all these meta like i have to get a heart rate monitor and i need to check my diet and sleep and all these things and it's been really interesting but these i'm reading all these books on meta like um athletic um physiologies and the diets of things and marginal gains is one of the things that comes up a lot is if you can increase 
even on the simplest things, if you if you're really at the high level, if you want to be at the highest level, if you increase even a one percentile or a point one percent, if you believe in the the concept of marginal gains, it will add so much more value to your life. Two last questions. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. One is one of the most important questions I always think is important is what are you most thankful for in this current moment of your life? For my family. Yes, definitely. Without my family, I will be just in in kind of maybe dead. This is probably. your this is your because family by biologically, but also your studio and your colleagues' family too, right? Your second family. Um, probably yes, uh, but I suppose my wife had a really really big change in my life because I was a kind of an artist a little bit uh, that uh, with uh, kind of alcohol and all this kind of drug stuff and I was more uh, I I was less structurized to be honest I I was kind of like an expression but when when we started to, to to speak when we started to to know each other better, I realized that oh my god, this is so wonderful, calming in this structural experience of reality, and I just went in so deep admiration of this clear perception of life as a kind of simple mechanism where everything works where sports uh, brings value, where diet, where kids, where healthy foundation can bring you to the biggest and the greatest results in the end. So this is probably the best thing, is my wife and my best friend Igor. He's the guy, the, the same story, what I found my own kind of best completely different brain structure who is completely structurized who is extremely calm and who is every time can just tell me no you are completely wrong no 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 let's keep this idea and i love to just throw crazy ideas and say hey what just look what i have no, no, no. Yes, and then extended uh, studio, extended family, where Anna, Alex, other people, uh, kind of our uh, artists, um, kind of, they they all wonderful. But people who I spend every day talking about work and life is definitely people who brings uh, this grounding effect where I can just make my own biggest and craziest stuff. I love that. It's a wonderful answer. And an honest one, yeah, which is Thank great. You. And the last question I have, so we can wrap our amazing podcast up for the next three years. Yeah. Who would you nominate yeah. <laughs> to be on this show? Who would you like me to interview? I'm not sure if I can promise I can do it, um, but I can try. But who would you nominate? Who Who do you think would be good to have on here to be dissected by the podcast? Wow. You can tell me later if you want to. <laughs> okay. I need to sleep on it. Yeah. Definitely. It's a great one. You can just send me a note. Really, really great one. Yes, I will do. Wow. <laughs> really, really good one. Because uh, I expected everything, but this one is just <laughs> okay. So I have no ideas. <laughs> yes, lovely. So let's let's make a photo. Let's make a photo and, uh, okay, three, two, one. And one, once again, boom, boom. Yes. Memory. So, uh, yes. And, uh, probably that's why people after listening to podcast will go and, uh, uh, check it out, uh, as a, yeah. as a video. Yeah. To, to see our faces of, and our expression. 
Yes, additional yeah. reality here. So, Ashley, thank you very much. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure. And uh, thank you for making this happen. It's really. You know, I wanted to catch up with you, and I think it was actually a really wonderful idea for us to catch up in a raw format that was recorded. I think this is actually makes it really interesting um, because we don't, we don't, we're, we, you and I are in our own bubble of selfishness, and that's a good thing. We're you and I are on our own quest of curiosities and using art as a device to like find ourselves. So it's a very insular process where we are in our own bubble. So. And then when the moments that we do connect, it's just like raw and pure like this or when we're walking around in Moscow and stuff. And I'm sure maybe the next time I see you, we'll be walking in the streets of London or you'll be here in L.A. or whatever. Um, but I do definitely really appreciate you as a creative, as a person, as what you're doing. It's very inspiring. And so I just and I appreciate you taking the time to do this and also making time for this show. And, and um, yeah, I just hope you have a, an amazing day the rest of your day. <laughs> an amazing week an amazing month an amazing left years until we connect again so it sounds amazing <laughs> thank you very much Ash. it's a, it's a it's a huge pleasure to go together through this wonderful journey and uh, kind of seeing and exploring how everything changes and helping to each other and talking and just building on top it's so wonderful yes let's go future is here <laughs> Love it. All right, cheers. <laughs> Love it. Cheers. Bye-bye-bye.